$1,000. Just enter this nationwide keyword on our website. Cash. That's cash. Enter it now. Log on now to ESPNAVL.com. The pounding begins. The wagons are circling. Every win is greater. It's football time in America. And this republic has never been stronger. The Sportsocracy, Beer City's best sports talk, live from the Ingalls studio. It is ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. The Sportsocracy is live in the Ingalls studio. We are heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Seen everywhere on YouTube. Go to the sportsocracy.com, click the live video link, subscribe to the channel, join us in the chat, and we are one week away. From, from from the greatest adventure of your lifetime. I mean, we, we already had one of those this year. Actually, Jeremy's had two of those already this yes. year. Yes. With, with, with the coverage of the Senior Bowl in Mobile, and then the Indianapolis Scouting Combine. And next week, we will be live from Marshall's Park. 2024 NFL Draft, one week from today, and we'll be there, Jeremy. He's it, somehow, somehow he's swinging the magic again. As the uh, you said earlier this week, oh, I need a travel agent. I don't. I think you're doing okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I found a. Uh, so we will be staying at a high rise, right above Marsh's party. <laughs> I, I booked it this morning, and I, I showed it to Tank, and I went. I mean, we might get killed here. I, I don't know how this place is so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that was the. That was the one that I. Even I went, and me and Mr. I look for a deal on everything, I had to ask the question of, well, how many homeless people are we sharing the room with? Because at that price, my friend, that is the steal of the century. So we will be close. <laughs> we don't know how safe we will be. Oh, no, I mean, look, it's a beautiful place. If there's only one bedroom. Uh, but there is a couch. We're not sharing a bed. Under zero circumstances. Okay, thank you. As long as we're on the same page on that one. Just... Yeah, I don't care if you take the bed or the couch. I can care less. It's just whichever one you take, I'm going to do the <laughs> I'm taking I'll, it. I'll do the... I, it will not be a... Well, we'll both do it. No. Yeah. No. Not going to happen. Uh, so, anyway, it's going to be a whole lot of fun next week. It is going to be... Uh, a lot of running around for us, but it is definitely... Ask the guy that has the itinerary, I just go ahead and tell you. You told me you were tired earlier, and I went, ha, 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 ha. You do not know the beginning of that word, my friend, but you will. So, wait, are you telling me that, that, you, that, that, that I'm not going to be able to carve out two hours to go to the damn uh, Motown Museum? Uh, possibly. I mean, maybe on Tuesday night you'll go by yourself. Because I... I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go at least give a picture taken in front of the house or something. Anyhow, it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Hey, uh, if if you know of any uh, Detroit things or mainly foods that we have to hit while we're up there, please let us know in the YouTube comments. You can uh, follow us on social the, media. Um, I would, I, from everybody that's been there has said it's terrible, so why would you want to go? I have not heard one person say, you really have to go to Mom's Spaghetti. Every review I've seen of that place is, so I went to Mom's Spaghetti, and they're really just trying to make money off of m and because this stuff's terrible. That's every review I've, I've heard about that place. However, I have been, I have been told that we must have corned beef egg rolls while we're there. Apparently, Detroit is one of the corned beef capitals of America. I was not aware that they had such a large Polish heritage in that city. But apparently, between them and Chicago are like two of the biggest corned beef meccas. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, like corned beef. beef. Really? No. I would definitely be trying to find uh, Asian corned beef. Is the is the place where we need to go find this, uh, and then of course Detroit style pizza. But other than that, Detroit doesn't really have anything, do they? I feel like everybody's got a signature food. Detroit's can't just be pizza. So if you have, I, I do look forward to having a Detroit style pizza, though. Yes, of course, it's going to be phenomenal. 
Uh, anyhow, so NFL draft run up. We've got another set of top 13s to get into today. Um, top 13, top 13 pass catchers. I mean, I feel like what you said before the show is what we should do. What's that? Top 26 pass catchers, and we'll sprinkle the tight ends in because the tight ends will do about as much as our YouTube audio, yeah. which is, you can hear it, you know it's there, but it didn't really change the is, it, is it still not coming in well? Yeah, we know it's broken. Okay, yeah. the 48 of you that have already told me that, we know. There's nothing we can do about it. We can, we'll, try, we'll try to keep juicing it. I couldn't finish a marketing degree. I sure as hell didn't get an engineering degree. So... <laughs> If you saw the, the mock drafts yesterday, that setup, you're going to see it way more often, real, real soon. A little above your pay grade. So, uh, top 13, 26 ish pass rushers, or it's not pass rushers, pass catchers today on the program. Uh, was there another pass? Was there another group position? Well, it's technically tight ends. Oh, okay, so we just mash them all together. Yeah, they, they got three in the top 26. <laughs> One o'clock hour, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that. Top 13 pass catchers. Um, also, we get the daily draft coming up. Um, uh, I'll be digging up another batch of top five greatest uh, draft picks in the last 40 years for each and every franchise. I promise Stephen Tao that we get to Baltimore today. We don't bury Baltimore on purpose. No, it's just you're always good, so you end up being last. Right, and you want to save some of the bangers. You don't want to do them all at once. So I've been trying to sprinkle in all your teams. We will get to all of them before draft day. Do not worry. Uh, Jeremy, superlatives for the 2024 NFL draft class? Uh, most likely to succeed? Of course, going down that path, we all did superlatives in high school. Oh, yeah. Did you win a superlative in high school? Two of them. Two of them. I actually won a third one, but I had to pick. How did you, how did you get two? It was, was, was popular? No, it was voted on. I won class clown... Let's see, I was class clown, least likely to succeed. <laughs> oh, wait, that wasn't a thing. That wasn't a thing. No, I don't remember. It was class clown and something else. Hmm. Interesting. Somebody voted for me for best car because they were a jackass. And you were, what was your car? I had a Ford Explorer that would shift into four-wheel into four drive just randomly. Yes. I, I'll never forget. And whoever it was voted for me for the two that I won as well. And I was like, I don't know who you are, but you're a jerk. <laughs> you're just a jerk. <laughs> And if you can hear me now and you were that person, yeah. you're still a jerk. Nobody's shocked. I won class clown at, uh, at Irwin High School way back in the day. Um, I was not considered for any of the others. Most, most, most spirited, probably. I think it was close between uh, me and my buddy Chip for most spirited school spirit. But other than that, yeah. Most likely to succeed in this draft class is Joe Alt. I think that would not be mine. I think that's my answer. Uh, my answer is Brock Bowers. Yeah. Because I physically... Do, tell me what the bust in him is. I How does... Short of like a farming accident, can you tell me how Brock Bowers doesn't turn into one of the five best tight ends in the league? Because I, I can't he, find it. He goes to a franchise that doesn't have a quarterback. Name me that team. I mean, if he goes to the New York Jets, obviously that's going to be very good for him. I don't until care who your quarterback is. Until Aaron Rodgers is done. I don't care if your quarterback is is Jordan Rodgers. You'll be just fine if you're Brock Bowers. Okay. I could throw to Brock Bowers. And, oh, oh, I can't throw to him. I'll manufacture his touches. He will be just fine. Joe Alt would probably have been my two. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I don't see bust. He's the, he's the most bust proof to me. In this class. That would be Bowers, Alt, Marvin Harrison Jr. for me. Okay. And then there is a huge drop-off. But, yeah, there's a lot of other players I like. In terms of sheer safety, mm -hmm. no. I know somebody's going to say Malik Neighbors. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a good player. Mm -hmm. But... Yes, I I have some I have some fears about him. Yeah, I want to call this most likely to wear the green the the, the gold jacket. Oh, if we're going that if we're going that route, then I yeah. probably would go Joe Alt at one, and then Marvin Harrison Jr. and then Brock Bowers. That's exactly my order. <laughs> when it comes and. and when it comes to succeeding, there is no greater success than wearing the gold jacket. 
So most likely Hall of Famer belongs to Joe Alt. Um, what's your, uh, what, what, what's your next one? Well, I, I didn't really go like high school superlatives. It was by position. So like quarterback, you've got strongest arm. The strongest arm would go to either Joe Milton mm-hmm. or Michael Penix. Because they both have absolute howitzer arms. The only problem is it's kind of hard for me to find anything outside of that that I really feel good about. Okay. Milton and Penix. Milton's got a cannon. The only problem is that it, it, it sprays like a shotgun. And good land over there. Good land over there. I, I mean, it's going to look really pretty. I don't like Anthony Richardson. As much of the criticism against him. In, in, to a point, yeah. Th- th- there is a similarity there. Because Richardson did have a really big arm. It was just insanely inaccurate. Yeah. I can throw it 70 yards. You might have to run 30 to go find it. But I can get it down there. Okay, so if you're going strongest arm, let's go most accurate. I don't know that my answer to that is going to be what you think. Okay. Because I have two. Okay. Jaden Daniels, Mm -hmm. Michael Pratt. Ooh, the kid from Tulane. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of just ability to make a finesse throw, Michael Pratt's as good as anybody in this class. I think a lot of people would think I would say Bo Nix there. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the one. I would say he's the best in rhythm. You get him off rhythm, uh, the accuracy dwindles, the mechanics can lack. And that, that tends to scare me. I mean, Nick's would probably be my three. I don't that, think he's in the ballpark of Jaden Daniels and, and Michael Pratt. Anybody that completed, what, like 77% of his passes, I think, this past year at Oregon? Anybody that puts up that kind of stat obviously has to be at least in the top three of most accurate quarterbacks in this class. But I get what you're saying. Most accurate, but also accurate when the big play needs to be made. Gives Jaden Daniels the the go-ahead there. Then you go into most mobile. Okay. That's Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy. I, I do think they're both hyper-mobile. With Jaden, I'm, I'm adding that to super accurate with a really good arm and really on time. With J.J. McCarthy, it's just it's such guesswork. Mm-hmm. And he is mobile. I just, I have never, I cannot name you one quarterback in the history of the draft that the biggest perk that their game had was that they were really mobile. And I wound up liking going into the draft process or wound up paying off where they, where they were drafted. Michael Vick, yeah, we, we talked about him the other day. Yes. I he, he was exciting. He sold jerseys. He was a terrible quarterback. It was, it was a bad franchise. The franchise went to the Super Bowl three years before he showed up. Mm-hmm. They weren't that terrible. And I would argue I would have taken Chris Chandler over him a hundred times out of a hundred. But he wasn't as much fun to watch. Woo. Awesome. I think you have to be mobile. I don't think you have to be a runner. Yes. My biggest fear with Jaden Daniels is... There were times that when things broke down, he would just take off. Mm -hmm. And that's not a great recipe for success in the NFL. Right. So you and I, when we get into these discussions about mobile quarterbacks, when I say a mobile quarterback, I don't necessarily mean a runner of a quarterback. Because there's many ways to be mobile. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take off and run every time. I I think you lump... Pocket presence and mobility into the same thing. I, I, I do. Because um, you said something about Tom Brady being mobile one day. He was not mobile at all. He was within the hyper aware inside yeah. the pocket. Within the pocket, he was one of the best mobile inside the bubble co- quarterbacks that they've ever been. Of just knowing where to step to get out of reach. To me, that counts as mobile. Obviously, it's a completely different category when you're talking about guys like even, you know, Patrick Mahomes and, hell, Joe Burrow and, um, you know, Josh Allen. Oh, even in this class, Drake May. They're all mobile to a point. We just may not be runners. 
So when you ha- when you say best mobile or most mobile quarterback, you're leaning more toward the runner side. Yes. Okay. Most aware. Who's the smartest? Who's the best? You know, defensive um, schemer. Right, or the, to recognize the defense, to have the right play. Who's the, basically the smartest? Well, you're asking me two different questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're asking me who's the best in pressure situations, that's probably Bo Nix. If it's best discerning what you what you have in front of you, mm-hmm. on the high side, it's Drake May. In terms of average, it's Jaden Daniels. Did you notice something about what I have not said here? You notice I haven't said Caleb Williams one time. Uh, yes. He's going number one. I haven't said him one time. <laughs> and is that because he doesn't do anything better? One specific thing any, better than anybody else, he just does the average better? His average is better than every quarterback in this class. Outside of maybe Jaden Daniels. I like Daniels better. Mm-hmm. Everything that Caleb Williams does better than anybody else are all things that I don't really care about. The the off balance, the uh, awkward arm angle, uh, out of sequence, out of structure, I, however you want to phrase it, those are all things I don't really care about. Because outside of Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen, there's not a lot of guys that that's your home run swing. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking 2024 NFL Draft. Superlatives, uh, if you have a favorite in this class or you want to think up your own and throw those into the YouTube comments, uh, just uh, hit us up there. Don't forget, you got to subscribe to the channel. Go to thesportocracy.com, click the live video link, and when we return, we will continue with the superlatives. Uh, and for uh, just to repeat, we do know that we sound like something out of Good Morning Vietnam uh, on the YouTube stream. On iHeartRadio, where you can also hear us, so you can watch the video and listen to us at the same time, we sound perfect. And that doesn't make any sense. They're modern day con artists, and they're the focus of creating a con, a true crime anthology podcast. Season one spotlights Ray Trapani and his tech startup scam, endorsed by DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather, and built on empty promises and millions from built investors. If someone's like, oh, what's your best way of making money? I don't think start a business. I'm like, oh, we should start some sort of scheme, and I can't help it. Listen to Creating a Con on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Look in your free iHeart app and search Creating a Con. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation. In a regular heartbeat, not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduce stroke risk better than warfarin. And over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. I'm Hannah Storm, and my new podcast, NBA DNA with Hannah Storm, digs deep into the history of professional basketball alongside my own as one of sports television's first female broadcasters. Now let's get you up to speed on what else happened around the NBA today. I'll talk to the legends of the game Dr. J. and those behind the scenes with some fantastic stories both on and off the court. Listen to NBA DNA with Hannah Storm on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Showtime is 
Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve her community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. The Sportsocracy. These guys are a f***ing disgrace. And welcome back into the Sportsocracy. Just a couple of class clowns yucking it up here on the radio three days or, or five days a week for three hours every day. All right, what are we going to talk That's about a, two weeks from now? Um, I mean, I know what I'm, I'm going to sure. talk about, which is going to be Let's nothing see. in large part. Zion I'll be on Williamson. a beat somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Tank talking to the eagle. Uh, what did we name him? Squawky? The eagle. You had him sitting in my chair while oh, I was yeah, going. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tank's just in here talking to Squawky, hoping he'll talk back. <laughs> it's going to look like Tom Hanks in Castaway. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're gonna have uh, we're 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 gonna have some Braves off days, uh, in there. We're gonna have some uh, nice little chatter. We'll have some interviews coming in as well. Um, in the time that uh, Jeremy is going on vacation, I still need dates for that. By the way, uh, I can tell you the week we come back from the draft, I'll be here till Wednesday, <laughs> and then. You should get a doll that looks like me. Well, I mean, we get a picture of Luke Combs and stretch it horizontally oh well, i'm gonna be honest with you uh by wednesday of us coming back from the draft we'll probably just have espn for those couple of days because i'm gonna be cooked well we'll have, to, we'll have to do draft grades so obviously <laughs> well, yeah, we monday tuesday grades. we'll come back with draft grades and then, and then <laughs> we'll see you <laughs> but uh, we will keep the boat afloat uh throughout the summer in the leaner months look we only have you know, we've got like off off season uh, activities just began today, and so I mean, there are going to be things to talk about. It's fine. We always make it through every summer. Oh no and doubt. Then we got, oh, thank you. It's back. I, I'm not. I, I'm not worried about not making it through. That is that is not a problem. All right. Apparently, we fixed our audio issue. Thank you, Patrick Holt, uh, for confirming that for me here. Everybody who's on the watch for that always just. We appreciate you letting us know. You just don't have to let us know 20 times. Yeah, once I say it once, we're good. The <laughs> only problem is that this board is used for three different places Places that we do this, and all the settings are completely different. And that little buzz is in here. Yes. So, yes. I don't know. Uh, so, we're talking superlatives for the 2024 NFL draft class. I uh, just went through the quarterbacks. We're doing pass catchers, top 30-ish pass catchers coming up in the next hour so we'll talk superlatives for the wide receiver class as we go down that list jeremy wanted to get some defensive players in here so what's your first award well my first one's most likely to kill a quarterback uh leatu latu i know that sounds strange because i'm really fond of jared verse in terms of just ability to get after a quarterback Latu is the best pass rusher in this class. And I'm not sure it's all that close. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty positive he will be th the third to come off the board, if not the fourth. Well, obviously there are health questions there that are going to cause a lot of teams to just go, I'm I'm good. If you got a first-round grade on you, and or maybe you're right in the first-round territory, and you've already had to medically retire once, that becomes a bit of a red flag, we'll say, for some teams. Now, you can look past it. You're going to get a hell of a player for whatever amount of time you have. Well, that's one of the things that's always funny to me is that we worry about – I heard this with Peyton Wilson. 
uh, you, you'd think you were actually standing right behind me when this conversation happened at the combine. Mm-hmm. Somebody came up to me and they said, well, Peyton Wilson may only play for seven years. And I literally laughed out loud and went, you do realize that's three times longer than the average player that will go in this draft. So he only plays till he's 30 years old. Why do I care? Guaranteed. I got seven years out of him. Why do I care? You tell me I got seven years of a guy at a high level. I'm in. I don't. How long do you need a guy to play for you to feel like it was at at a high level? Like if Leatu Latu comes into the league, he's as good as we say he is. How long does he have to play before you go? I'm good with that. Because I have a number in my head. Four years. That's exactly the number I had. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, there are... He could fall apart like a house of cards or like a Joe Biden economy, and I wouldn't care at (laughs) all. I want at least, like, three really good years if I'm taking you in the first round late. Like, if I'm spending a high pick, obviously, I want those guys. Those guys have to be no doubters for a decade. Or I'm not going to feel good about it. Like, if I if I took a guy at six, I took Daniel Jones at six, that dude needs to be good for a decade for me to feel good about that. Okay, let me, let me give you a hypothetical. Yeah. You and I both feel about the same way on Dallas Turner, right? Yeah. His, for, his superlative for me is most bendy. <laughs> okay. Because he has the best bend. Mm-hmm. I mean, coming off the edge, he is the guy that can do just superhuman freak things. The only problem is that you see him against the run, and it looks like me blocking Tank. Of Man, he just disappeared out of that one, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Uh, Didn't really have a whole lot of effect there. So which one would you rather have? You have Dallas Turner, and you're the Atlanta Falcons. I can have seven or eight years of you as a good pass rusher, but I can only play you on second and third down. Or I get four years of Leatu Latu at just mock 10. And I took you at eight. I'll Which take, one? I'll take Latu. I will too. I will too. And I think teams get locked into this all the time. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing. There's a great chance that when that four years runs up and you get into the team option, there's a great chance he's going to leave anyway. Yep. It's a great chance he's going to leave. And there's also, I mean, look what happens to a lot of players in this league. The, as you said, the average length of an NFL uh, career is 2.4 years, 2.4 for a years. drafted player, right? 2.4 years. Do you realize how skewed that is for first rounders that are guaranteed deals for mm-hmm. four years? Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I, when I went through making these lists for the top five draft picks of the last 40 years, I had to go through a lot of guys' careers and analyzing, like, how long are these guys effective? And how does this draft pick, did this draft pick pay off? More often than not, I found myself going, well, that guy was a first-round pick, and he wasn't an all-pro for 10 years. But he was a really solid starter for 10 years. And maybe made one Pro Bowl or two Pro Bowls. It's so rare that you find guys that have longevity and superstar ability. It is so hard to draft in this league. Bob Brown on our YouTube comments said, in his opinion, a successful draft means that you had three players who aren't a second contract. That's not bad. I like the way he said it. If you have three players that aren't a second contract, period. Not just with you, just that four years from now, another team looks at and goes, hey, I want to pay you money to play for us. Because if you look back through the annals of time, why do you think that Jet, the the, the Jet class from a couple years ago, the Saints from the late 2010s, why do you think we talk about those classes so often? Because they had four guys. Both classes had four guys that were all pro level or right around it. And so long as they all stay healthy for the Jets, because they already have for New Orleans, that's better than you could ever anticipate. If you get three starters out of a draft, you killed it. Killed it. That's why when we, uh, you know, when I was going through that process and I got to the 2017 New Orleans Saints and they ended up with seven starters, impact players in one draft, nobody has drafts like that. Nobody has drafts like the New York Jets in 2022. 
that their first four picks may all end up being Super Bowl champions in the first three or four years of their career, and who knows what the ceiling can be, especially for Sauce. That Sauce kid's, is, is, I mean, that kid's been in the league for two years. He's been an All-Pro both times. <laughs> That's like Darrell Rivas territory. This is like, you know, this is every bit of, if you wanted to start the Patrick Mahomes goat discussion in the first three years when he made all those AFC championship games back to back to back, maybe we should start having that conversation about Sauce this early in his career. It's a great cornerback. And he may headline one of the greatest classes that we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hit that many prospects in one draft. If you've hit two in a draft, eh, we're not doing terrible. Now, I will also <laughs> say, conversely, it's hard to miss on every pick. Well, I mean, unless you're the Carolina Panthers. And then... Even then, you still get one. <laughs> you still have a guy that you go, I, okay, you know. Okay. I mean, he's fine. Jonathan Mingo. Mm -hmm. Did I see a lot from him the first year? No. Do I still believe in him? Yeah, I do. I'm just trying to, what, was it the Panthers or it was another, it was another team we were talking about the other day that like four years ago, there's nobody left from that draft class. That happens that more often than you think. And none, and like none of them are still in the league. Either. That does not happen as often. <laughs> right? Like, like they're all sitting there waiting for somebody to give them a you know a practice squad spot. They're they're playing in the UFL for what Joe Burrow makes per minute. I try to remember who that was. We were laughing real hard the other day looking at that at that draft class from just a couple of years ago. Hey, the Jets have some that look like a car wreck, which is why I don't very often go to NFL draft history and click on the Jets tab because it, it gives me this angina. <laughs> I can feel it right here. It's like it's like indigestion with yeah. a kick. Yeah. All right, so we got through uh, most likely to kill a quarterback, Leatu Latu, and the most bendy. It's Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner. And then I, I only had, I mean, I had a few more, but one that I specifically need to get to. You asked me the other day what it was about Marshawn Nealon that was, uh, that was pushing people. Yeah. PFF did a, a list of superlatives too. And I don't like the way that they said this. Theirs for Marshawn Nealon was best bull rush. Okay. I don't like how that's said because I don't agree with it. I get why you said it that way. Mine would be best converting speed into power. And that's Marshawn Nealon. Because, and that's why I think he can play multiple different spots. That's also why I think he's been screaming up draft boards because every team looks at that kid and goes, well, he could be our blank. Dallas Turner, if you put his hand in the dirt, he'll be out of the league in four years, period. Straight up. And I'm, I'm not being facetious there. Mm -hmm. If he is not standing up, he has zero shot of lasting in this league as a high-end player. I mean, teams might keep keep giving him second, third, and fourth shots in spite of the fact he's just getting annihilated. Marshawn Nealon can do practically anything you ask him to do. Now, he will have varying levels of success, and I think he is really good converting speed into power. So that's the – I was trying to find some okay. cute way of saying that. Like the torque uh, – best torque. Turbines to speed. Like they used to say in the on the old Batman show, battery to power, turbines to speed, and then they'd start up Batmobile. You don't remember that? I don't. Somehow oh, you, found you never the watched that TV show. Oh, you about the Adam West one? It was great. Where he was wearing his underoos on the outside. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, you stop. He's the best Batman. You know it. That's the dumbest thing you've ever said. <laughs> Adam West maybe is in the top five. Mm. I mean, he's better than Val Kilmer, and he's better than George Clooney. But other than that, I'm going to straight. Number it, two it, behind Robert Pattinson. It's not close. You know, it's been a good run. <laughs> but in this commercial break, I'm going to kill Tank. <laughs> Just because he said that to make me angry. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. <laughs> You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Absolutely gorgeous afternoon. We've got sunshine and mild weather, but change on the way. A couple of rounds of showers, thunderstorms over the next few days. Sunny today, low 80s.
Tonight will be in the mid-50s with a slight chance of showers late. Friday, a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm, maybe a strong storm or two, 78. Saturday, another round of showers, thunder showers possible in the afternoon, 73. Showers are likely Sunday highs only near 60. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by True Green. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. People are talking about Summit Dental in Asheville. Just check out their Google reviews. One patient writes, I'll start by saying I really hate going to the dentist. My anxiety is always through the roof and I'm always so nervous. However, Summit Dental may be the first place that my anxiety is actually not going through the roof. The staff that works at Summit are an incredible team. They're kind, knowledgeable, and funny. I left feeling confident that we have a plan to help restore my teeth and get me on track to a better smile. Find out more about Summit Dental at AshevilleSummitDental.com or call 828-277-6868. What are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs. I can get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I can win up to $2 million in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. Love golf but hate hunger? Golf Against Hunger 2024 takes place April 22nd. And it's your chance to help end food waste while enjoying your favorite game. Go to food-connection.org to sign up for Golf Against Hunger. Try the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. It's like walking down recent memory lane. To have Orange Dreamsicle Frosty in our timeline is truly something special. And we shouldn't let the moment pass us by. And be quick, it's only available for a limited time. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pregaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from white haze peach perfect scary berries and my personal favorite mean green and number three at six percent abv max protect always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over beast unleashed available at your local retailer If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern Hospitality Tech. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. Boy, you must be outside your mind. The sportsocracy. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. It's ESPN Asheville. This is the sportsocracy. It's time to get just a bit outside. Jeremy, if you had a Super Bowl ring, how protective of that thing would you be? Have you ever seen Lord of the Rings? That creepy little... It's the precious. You give us the precious. Right. That would be me. Would you play games with your ring? No. Would you ever allow someone else to hold on to it? For no. You? Our our week in Detroit coming up, I'd probably hide it in my bum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we didn't need to know that. Yeah, I'd be but, very protective is probably the understatement of the year. Jeremy would go to great lengths, we will say. Correct. Um, to protect a Super Bowl ring. Did he have one? Um, on the New Heights podcast, Jason Kelsey told the story yesterday of there was an event at the University of Cincinnati at the Fifth Third Arena. Uh, they called it the Lombaby Games. 
and they were just doing like there were there were just different you know games like you're at a frat party or so like a field day kind of a thing you had different events and stuff so there was a, a style weird name for it though so there was a yeah i don't know what lawn baby means um, i don't either it sounds like some it sounds like some stupid song by sexy red or <laughs> sexy red it's, it's it's the it's the artist who played that song that i was talking about the other day that made me realize i needed my white new balances i asked my kid who sang that stupid song she played for me that was the answer Oh, uh, the Ice Spice girl? Is that who you're talking about? I know. This one's name was Sexy Red. Oh, okay. And, and it was awful. Okay. Uh, anyway, during the Lom Baby games, one of the events apparently was they put Jason Kelsey's Super Bowl ring into a giant pool of Skyline Chili with other decoy rings. I'm not sure why, but I guess the, the goal was somebody needs to find the real Super Bowl ring, which if this were, you know, 1968, right, and we were fighting over one of those rings, that'd be one thing. You know, those ones that were just gold and they had one stone in the middle and it just said world champs Packers. You mean like the Jets ring that had one diamond in <laughs> yeah, the middle? exactly. And now I look at the old school Jet guys and just go, man, you got screwed on that. Yeah, deal, you did. did. Cause these rings are worth like a million dollars a piece the way they're doing them now. And so, yeah, anyway, shocker of shockers. When the event was over, they never found Jason's ring. Well, if other people were using this, how do you know somebody didn't just take it? Uh, because this is what uh, dumb men do, <laughs> and all men are dumb men in the right connotation. Uh, so they, yeah, they 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 lost his ring in that, uh, in 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 the pool of it, and they thought, well, I'll just go back and get it after the event's over. So they they had like an intern out there shoveling, like with a snow shovel trying to sift through this thing to find his ring. He couldn't find it, or she, I don't know. Then they decided to try to use a metal detector to find it in the Skyline Chili. But apparently metal detectors don't work on Skyline Chili, Jeremy, because there is a uh, large amount, or, or I guess it says trace amounts, but I got to figure it's got to be a sizable trace amount of iron in Skyline Chili. They won't let a metal detector detect anything. So, moral of the story here, there's precious metals in Skyline Chili. Stop eating that crap. There's lead in the Lunchables. Right. It's the government. They're doing it. I'm going to end up with some kind of, you know, metallic poisoning from eating too much Skyline Chili. The government's putting hormones in the Skyline Chili. It's making us all effeminate. This is one of the dumbest things I think I've ever seen, though, because if, if I, I'm with Jeremy. If I had a Super Bowl ring, I would do everything in my power to protect it, keep it away. You're not using it for some stupid-ass game at a pep rally for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> uh, my story's about Dale Earnhardt Jr. He, he did have a bit of his career where he was okay he was always really popular he just didn't win as much as you would want him to who's this dale earnhardt jr okay. yeah well he went on a podcast the dirty mo podcast and he was asked about you know his his tact as a driver and this comes off Kyle Bush telling the Pat McAfee show that he spent six months in the gym working out, slimmed down, results didn't change because it's hard to drive a slow car fast. I don't know when Kyle Bush has ever had a slow car, but I get the point of what you were saying. Dale Earnhardt Jr. went a little, he, he went a little further. He said, this is not advice. This is bad advice, but this is what I did. I felt like I didn't run as good or race as good if I didn't blow off some steam on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. I would tell myself I'm going to work on it. I'll do better, lose some weight, going to work out, going to do these new things to try and be in better physical shape, better mental shape. I would abstain from drinking or something for a couple of weeks. Results didn't change. And then I'd go party with my buddies or something, have some friends over on a Tuesday night, and we'd, we'd kick ass on yeah. race weekend. Yeah. I was like, maybe I'm one of the old guards, man. I need to drink, smoke cigarettes, and go kick ass. <laughs> Hell yeah. I have never wanted a phrase on a shirt more than that with my face in the middle of it 
Yes, that's exactly right. Say it again. Uh, I need to drink and smoke cigarettes and go kick ass. I think smoke cigarettes, drink. Yep. Boom. With boxes checked beside them. Boom. D E I. Love it. I mean, that's. I mean, but does that surprise anybody? No. Does it surprise anybody that in a sport that was started by running corn liquor, that one of your most famous drivers ever went, ah, you know. I've always felt like there's a lot to that. Uh, You know, for some guys, some guys have to be regimented in everything that they do, right? Like Jean Girard, yes. Well, well, I was going to use the example of like, like golf with Phil Mickelson. You look at Phil Mickelson and he is everything comes down to the blades of grass and the way the wind's blowing and he's very technical about how he goes about everything. And then you have dudes like your hero. What? I brought up that Sexy Red was the one who sang that song and the chat got just mean and it's funny. Oh, they're picking on Sexy Red in the chat. Yeah. Let's let's, let's be nice, guys. Well, you work with said that'd be like Jeremy calling himself Tiny Jeremy. Uh, (laughs) Not so much. (laughs) But you have guys that look at it so analytically, and then they have, you know, guys like, you know, your your hero, Jeremy, Mr., uh, Mr. Mr. Big Beard, Mr. Smoking on the on the course, Mr. Uh, crushing twelve natty lights before Are we the talk about John team. Daly. Of course, or? we're talking about John Daly. Some dudes just they do better when they can just be themselves. Of which I'm, and, I'm, I'm one of those people. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. This doesn't surprise me at all. Of which I mean, I feel like this would be a great time to ask uh, uh, the powers that be here at uh, this this lovely radio station. So does that mean it's time for me to start having four beer lunches? Because, I mean, I feel like we're doing pretty well <laughs> as we sit. Yeah. But if you want it to get better. You just, you're making sacrifices for your art. Jeremy, that's all that is. Sometimes you do what you got to do to entertain the masses. I'm here for you. That's right. When the rain starts to pour. Because he's a giver. I'll be there for you. Because you're there for me too. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have uh, you have some more draft superlatives? I do here, uh, and I'm I'm sticking on the defensive side solely because, like we said, we would be talking about we'll be talking about the pass catchers in the next hour. Yes. Uh, getting into the corners, you know who I'm going to say is best in man. The, the the best man is Quinion Mitchell. He's also the best overall. But I think in terms of just sheer man-to-man coverage, I would say Quinion Mitchell is, he's probably top three overall in man, probably the best zone cover corner in this class. And then you get the composite where he's just, he's the best man. Mm-hmm. I, I had that written out better than I said it. He's the best man, just not in man. Because there right. are a few that I would take over him probably in man. In man coverage. But overall, it's not even close right right quenyon mitchell should be the first cornerback taken off the board i will not be shocked to see him go inside the top 10 um number eight seems to be the earliest he could possibly be drafted. Yeah, atlanta you should do that now, especially if you want to get an a from me because if you take dallas turner over quenyon mitchell it's not gonna happen <laughs> uh but i i also feel like he could be a he, he could be a guy that maybe some teams want to trade up for that might be enough to get, I don't know, Las Vegas to try to move up a few spots to get a guy like Quinion Mitchell. It's not just the quarterbacks that, that that could be worth trading up for in this draft. I could see people trading up. I could see teams trading up for Quinion Mitchell. I can see teams trading up, especially in the back end of the first round, to try to get the tackles as they come off the board. I said yesterday in the seven round Lister mock draft, which I actually think just ended about 15 minutes ago, <laughs> uh, that I, I think the trades really get popular in the twenties because yes. you start seeing teams that have first round grades on guys, but they only have one left. Mm-hmm. So they start moving around. We'll give you that top of the second round pick. We'll give you a future pick to get up there and get our guy. Yes. We were talking about prop bets for the draft yesterday I believe it was yesterday or day before yesterday because we didn't have a show yesterday. 
Um, they, I did. I talked for well, three hours to myself. Yes, uh, and and you, I hear you did a fantastic job as well. It's a lot of talking, man. It's a lot of talking. <laughs> the new home studio is pretty sweet, though. I must admit, there's a great chance that you, the lovely listeners of this show, are going to get to hear me do it my underwear way more often. I've only done that here at iHeart like seven or eight times. You're saying the quiet part out loud. You're not supposed to say that part. Because now they have the picture in their minds, and it's just going to throw off the whole. Hey, Tank, anybody on this YouTube stream ever seen me from the waist down on camera? You know what they say about assuming? Just saying. I don't want to. I don't want to assume. And I hate that you even made me assume. <laughs> The other day when we were talking about prop bets for the draft, um, well, I, I think uh, one of them was five and a half over under five and a half trades. Yeah, I'll take the under. You, you'll take, you'll still take the under. Mm -hmm. I don't know though, because the more I went through, I did. I tried to go through a, a mock draft yesterday. I only made it four rounds into the seven round before I gave up on it. Yeah, computer uh, teams taking two minutes to pick. That was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who thought that was a good let's idea, but uh, you were not done that. Yeah, let's not do that. Um, but before I gave up on it and, you know, get down to the end of the first round and I'm thinking there could be a lot of trades, a lot of trades that happened at the back end of that first round with not only teams trying to get up, maybe to get a cornerback or, or a quarterback, excuse me, get that fifth year option on Michael Penix or something. But there, there could be a lot of movement at the end of the first round. Made me think that maybe there's a possibility it could go over that number. Uh, and one more here before we get into pass catchers in the next hour. Uh, slottiest. I have two. It's Mike Sandrastrill, Chris Abrams, Drain. Mm -hmm. Those are the two slottiest corners in this draft. You're in the sportsocracy. Maybe they listen to Sexy Red. I, I just couldn't help it. <laughs> I saw it. I went, I wrote the joke. I'm telling the joke. It's ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM and 1400. we got Jeremy's picks of the night coming up next. Introducing Tanside Stone Tile Flooring, a game changer in the tile industry. Say goodbye to the trade-off between durability and easy installation with Tanside's revolutionary indoor-outdoor stone tile. Visit Tanside.com to see how our tile is installed without concrete or mortar. Instead, our innovative rubber gasket system connects the tiles together. Each tile coming pre-assembled, you simply grab one and place it. No expertise needed. At Tanside.com, you can see how our foam back tiles contour to cover any existing floor while insulating against sound and cold. Beautiful and versatile. Tanside tile adapts to indoor or outdoor use. From kitchens to patios on concrete basements or wooden decks. All with the durability of stone that's guaranteed for life. Witness this innovative product yourself and order a sample today at Tanzite.com. That's T-A-N-Z-I. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. Regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Phone 828-333-9517 in Asheville and in Greenville. Hey, if you're listening to me right now, I have one thing every business needs most, attention. Think about it. We swipe and scroll past stuff all day, but when we're driving, cooking, working out, we're also listening. That's the magic of audio at iHeart. We're in your next customer's ears while they're living life and listening just like you are right now so get your customers to listen up today using radio digital and podcasts call 844-AD-HELP-5 that's 844-AD-HELP-5 did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat maybe it's time to reward yourself our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day grass-fed organic you name it 
Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. We're less than a week away from the 2024 draft in Detroit, Michigan, where we will be live. You can find all that on the social medias at the Sportsocracy. But you can take the betting markets to figure out exactly what's going to happen next week. And the odds makers seem to be pretty confident about it. I'm Jeremy Green of the Sportsocracy.com, and this is Green on Green, brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. We'll get back to the NBA playoffs tomorrow, but looking at the futures market, I realize a lot of new bettors don't necessarily understand what all of these numbers mean. Caleb Williams is locked into the number one spot, which is why he's minus 10,000 to go number one overall. Jaden Daniels is pretty locked in at number two. That's why he's minus 350. But if you look through the rest of the top 10, virtually every player is between minus 175, which is Joe Ald at number seven, and Malik Neighbors at plus 220 at number five. What does that mean? It means that right now, odds makers feel really good about what's going to happen at number one, number two, number three, number seven. But how does that make you money? If you look to the fifth pick, Malik Neighbors at number five, plus 220, is really the pivot spot in this draft. How can you make that make you money? Because that's what Vegas is telling you is the most likely spot that you're going to see a trade. If you can forecast that trade and then wager it down the line with all of the dominoes, you can make this an incredibly profitable scenario. I wouldn't be shocked if that's where you get J.J. McCarthy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using code JGBETS and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code JGBETS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com com slash sportsbook slash nc this is your exergen temporal scanner weather forecast on espn Asheville. absolutely gorgeous afternoon we've got sunshine and mild weather but change on the way a couple of rounds of showers thunderstorms over the next few days sunny today low 80s tonight will be in the mid 50s with a slight chance of showers late friday a few showers maybe a thunderstorm maybe a strong storm or two 78 Saturday, another round of showers, thunder showers possible in the afternoon, 73. Showers are likely Sunday highs only near 60. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by True Green. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. Woody and Wilcox. All the holidays are pet holidays now. <laughs> is that yeah, what Get it ready is? for Cinco de Mayo. You and your dog doing shots together. <laughs> right. So hard to teach your dog to suck the lime. Mm. Weekday morning starting at 6 on Asheville's Real Rock. Rock 105.1. To some, a baby's babbling doesn't mean much, but it does. Especially if there's no babbling at all. Little to no babbling by 12 months or later is just one of the possible signs of autism in children. Learn more at AutismSpeaks.org. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart 
heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. From the Ingle Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. Now, your chance to win $1,000. Just enter this nationwide keyword on our website. Check. That's check. Enter it now. Log on now to ESPNAVL.com. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingle Studio. And welcome back into the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. 92.9 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. The Sportsocracy is NFL draft bound. In less than one week, we will be uh, on our way to Detroit, Michigan. And now we know where we're going to stay. And we don't have to drive like an hour uh, out of the city and then back into it each night. No, we do not. Jeremy has found a nice dumpster for somewhere for us to uh, sleep in. And, hey, look, it's I'm a pretty... nice place. It's a small place, but it's right there at the draft, which uh, big fan of. Uh, 200 square feet of uh, space. We're staying in well, the janitor's I mean, closet. I well, I mean, as soon as I said downtown Detroit, you should have known it wasn't real big. No doubt. No doubt. Look, I don't know when the last time you went to any big city was that had a downtown like this. What they consider spacious is a nice way of saying you have a closet that doesn't have a door because as, it doubles as your bathroom and half the time your kitchen. As I proved in Indianapolis, as long as it has a floor, I can sleep anywhere. <laughs> yeah. You did sleep on that floor. <laughs> this is less of a social occasion, though. You, you, yeah. I mean, we will have that first day, which I'm I'm looking forward to. We'll we'll get into the city early. We'll we'll have a show. We'll get all the stuff set up to make sure it works. We'll talk to you, the great listenership of this show, and then we'll go do stuff. It's gonna be another fun trip. I'm glad to take y'all all on the ride with us. Just go to the sportocracy.com, click that live video link, subscribe to the channel. That way you can join us in the chat while we're there. You can join us in the chat each and every day once you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Plus, you'll get alerts of whenever we go live. So when we go live for all of the uh, first and second day of the NFL draft, and then when Jeremy goes live for the third day of the NFL draft, you get that little alert on your phone. You can join us throughout the whole draft must process. Uh, West Virginia Willie asked if we'll be allowed to say uh, the, the dirty words at the radio row at the draft. And for the evening sessions, yes. And the answer is, yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and Jeremy will try not to get kicked out. I might have to say them really quietly. I don't. I mean, I don't have the total layout of where we're going to be sitting, but I, I have a good feeling that people are going to look around, especially with me adorning my hat, going, what is that? You still haven't sent me a picture of this hat, and I feel like I should be giving some heads up. Why is that hobo, why is that hobo so well-dressed, and what animal did he kill for that feather? Do you have, like, a little hat box for it so, so it doesn't get crushed in the in the, in the airplane? Of of course I I'm do. just get. I'm just asking. I'm... And my second question is, what are you, a cop? No, no, I'm just curious. Is this going to fit inside your suitcase, or you could be carrying this hat box like a cake? <laughs> you haven't traveled much in your life, have you? <laughs> no, I haven't traveled much in my life. Tank's going to be walking. I've definitely never me. traveled with a hat I had to put in a box. Tank's going to be He's going to show up to the airport wearing no socks. Like, what are you doing? You, you, your feet are on the floor now of the airport. No. That is how you get hepatitis, and now you're taking it to the draft. What are you doing? <laughs> We will be live next week.
from Marcius Park at the 2024 NFL Draft. Flostradamus Jeremy Green uh, gracing us once again with his top 13s at every position leading up to the draft. This hour, we will focus on the pass catchers because this is a loaded draft of pass catchers. There's a loaded draft of wide receivers. There's one great tight end, and then there's a couple of dudes, and then there's a whole bunch of dudes that you'll never hear from again. That's the tight end class. Yes. One really good one. Two that you may look at and go, oh, I thought he was going to be a thing. And then all the others are just, yeah. Hey, look, yeah. Ben Hartsock here played for 14 years in the NFL. Can't. I forgot you were here. <laughs> I'm friends with Ben. I'm, I can do that. I can't wait to see Dalen Hoker lighting it up for the Brahmas in the, the, US, San in the XFL. The Brahmas. Be the next great pass catcher for Carolina Panthers stalwart Matt Corral. <laughs> Is that who he's playing for now? I don't know. I know oh. he plays for one of those teams. Okay. All right. The uh, next snap of XFL or UFL football I watch will be the first. Number one pass catcher uh, in this draft is? That's Marvin Harrison Jr., unless you did it wrong. I get some people liking Malik Neighbors. If there were absolutely no red flags with his personality, I think maybe I could get to the path that you liked him better than Marvin Harrison. With it, I don't. I, I can't get there. Because Marvin Harrison just doesn't have those. People freaked out about the fact he didn't want to talk at the combine, that he didn't want to run the pro day. Of course he didn't. What good would it do? He was locked into going in the top five regardless. And as soon as this quarterback nonsense chimed up, he knew. It's not like I'm going to pass a quarterback. If New England's taking a quarterback, my ceiling is four and my floor is five. It benefits me not at all to do any of these things. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, in terms of ready-made receiver prospect can you name me one better in the last 10 years no justin jefferson had way bigger questions yes jamar chase had bigger questions mm -hmm. and i would say jamar chase is the only one that's really all that close i would say that's accurate yeah justin jefferson definitely there were some some who didn't think that you know, he belonged to even be breathing still. Just complete waste of space. I <laughs> didn't think he was going to be a star. That is all I said. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., your number one pass catcher in this class. Number two? It's Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors. I, I do have him over, uh, over Brock Bowers. Mm -hmm. And it's... In a list like this, this is not the grade I have on them. This is the grade that I would have on my draft board because having that premier outside receiver is more valuable than having the the non-inline tight end. Because Brock Bowers is basically going to play like a hybrid receiver tight end. Yes. If he only played receiver, this is where I would grade them. And look, Malik Neighbors is special with the ball in his hand. For legit 4-4 four, four speed, He's not quite as big as, as Marvin Harrison. He's significantly shorter. But with the ball in his hand, he is special. Got great hands. There, there's not a lot of knock. Most of the knock I have on him is not athletically. It, it's not on the field. It's what happens when you're off the field. And in the top 10, that, that scares me quite a bit. Uh, a, at least one scout has reportedly referred to unnamed scout has referred to malik neighbors neighbors as quote a red flag not not there are red flags he is a red flag you've said this a couple of times over the last week or so it's been getting hotter and hotter as the draft gets closer no it's just we're saying it out loud what we, we all have what are they uh, but, but what are the it's flags? all personality i don't want to throw a guy under the bus that i don't know he did x event so if you wonder why i don't tell you the events that i have heard it's because i can't verify them now if you got arrested and i saw a police report okay now that's a little different malik neighbors is possibly going to have a personality that is a little difficult to deal with in the room do i worry about that a ton with receiver no but you get two players that are as close to me as i think marvin harrison and malik neighbors are is it a differentiator absolutely it is 
there are some people that are not sure how well he is going to adjust to the level of money that he's going to have, to being in a big city. There are things that are scary. Is that going to knock him out of the top six for me? No. No, there's no discussion. And let me go ahead and tell you, if he fell to seven, the Tennessee Titans would auction that pick off and the price would be significant. Mm -hmm. There's, I've not seen any discussion of him dropping drastically because of this. Some of the terms that I have seen used about him are high maintenance. Like he's a high maintenance player. High maintenance is not really a red flag for me with wide receivers. I mean, look, I grew mm-hmm. up in the age of diva wide receivers. I don't care about that. I care about you getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. I care about you possibly having contentious relationships with teammates. Yes. Those two things have both been floated out there that they could be problems. Mm-hmm. And like I said, thing. if I could verify any of the accounts, I'd give them to you. Mm-hmm. I can't. Could it be much ado about nothing? Sure could. No, Just no. like Warren Sapp smoking weed, which wasn't a problem the entire time he was in the league yep. until about five seconds after he retired, and then all of a sudden he was uh, out banging seven gram rocks with Charlie Sheen. So, I mean, I could name on one hand the number of guys that have ever been that I've ever heard this smoke about this loud that there wasn't something that came out over the course of time. Now, is it enough to derail your career? Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. But and when I do have to touch on this. Who that dude me, who I, I greatly respect his his fandom and his knowledge of, of the NFL draft, said, I've watched neighbors in person his whole career, never knew a red flag. Do you know why? Because he was at LSU. You know when those things come out? When guys at LSU are asked by other people around the league that they trust, hey, what's this guy like? I'm not going to let that out of the room while he's still playing for me. The minute you go into the draft, if I want information to be coming this way, I better be willing to send it out that way. And that's how these things happen. It's not that it didn't happen. Put it all right. Let me put it this way. I have it on good authority that a team did an FBI background check on Malik Neighbors and took him off the board. Wow. Do with that what you will. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Just because there was too much you know, there. That well, there's I, too I, much of noise. Course, of course, this receiver class is too good, and there's too much noise. Yes. And you're going to have to spend – that. that's part of where I was going with this was there's been no chatter that he's going to fall drastically. So you're going to spend a top five, mm-hmm. top seven at the worst pick on a guy who – who knows? Maybe he's a headache in the locker room. Maybe he fights with his teammates. Maybe he doesn't listen to his coaches. Maybe he has some uh, off-the-field relationships that you're not too happy about. Maybe there have been things in the past that – he's gotten in trouble for or somebody looked away or shocker of shockers a football player may have gotten in trouble for something in one city where he wouldn't have gotten he wouldn't have got gotten in trouble for it in baton rouge Mm -hmm. because there's a different culture there all right right now the dallas cowboys have an issue with micah parsons that's not an opinion it's a fact it's Mm -hmm. it's literally out there it is not hard to find micah parsons had the same level of red flags now he had one event that was significantly worse than anything I, I've ever heard about Malik Neighbors. Yes. But a lot of the personality red flags were the same. And now they're kind of bearing themselves out of his act is wearing a little thin in the locker room, and that's the best defensive player in the league. I have 50 draftable receivers. Nobody's questioning how great Malik Neighbors is. All we're saying is that there are things that make certain teams uncomfortable. That's why the the idea that anybody was going to take neighbors over Marvin Harrison Jr., I'll have to say it to believe it. <laughs> right. Cardinals d- haven't heard it one time from anybody that was connected enough for me to really put any stock into it. Mm-hmm. But there is a, and I'm glad Notorious B.I.G. said this because I wanted somebody other than me to say it. So let's be honest about top five wide receivers. Which one isn't a diva? Thank Stephon God. Diggs, Justin Jefferson, Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, all of them having something going on. That's the point. That's the reason you're not going to see neighbors necessarily fall. But you'll see a team that lets him fall in their laps, and they don't have to give up capital. They don't have to do anything like that. They didn't have to bypass Marvin Harrison. Because if you take if you take neighbors ahead of Marvin Harrison, nothing goes wrong with Harrison. Neighbors, for whatever reason, get suspended for something. All of this is going to come back up. And then you look like a moron. Because universally, we all like MHJ better. Mm-hmm. So that's why I've been so dogmatic that that's how that's going to go. 
All right, uh, top 13 wide receiver, excuse me, top 13 pass catchers for the uh, 2024 NFL draft by at ESPN draft nerd Jeremy Green is the goat at three. Uh, it's Brock Bowers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he is my three. He's the just answer. over Roma Dunze. Yes. We will now only refer to him as the goat. No, we will never refer to him as the goat. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Unless he starts eating tin cans and mowing my grass, he is not a uh, or the goat. It's a one of a kind prospect. He is a one of a kind prospect. He's a very modern day NFL uh tight end. He he's dead set on becoming a better blocker, which is encouraging for me. In terms of tight ends that I've ever evaluated, he's one. He is one of one. And I do find it funny. This is the discrepancy in draft classes. You remember how we couldn't believe Kyle Pitts wasn't going to go in the top five the year he came out? Yep. Could you see a path that Brock Bowers goes in the top five now? Yes. I don't. Really? I don't. Uh, please tell me what it is. Chargers. Out of your mind. I had it that way early. I very quickly went, you know, you, smarter person than me, had this exactly right. Brock Bowers is not the type of tight end that Jim Harbaugh is looking for. He wants a guy that can inline block. It is way more likely that he goes Eric All or one of those guys later on in the, in the class and just takes the, the risk. Mm -hmm. Because Harbaugh is also another guy that doesn't invest that much in lesser positions. But why would I not? If I, if I believe that Brock is potentially one of the greatest. But why, you do. But why Jim would, Harbaugh doesn't. You don't know that. I do know that. Okay. Uh, because I know what he looks for in a tight end, and Brock Bowers is none of it. Okay. He's a great receiver. He's not a good blocker. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. You that, don't care. No, hold on. Let me finish the point. I don't care that he's not a good blocker. I can go get one of those blockers. That's not in the how the system round. works. Okay. That, that was the whole point I was trying to make, but you kept telling me this, that, and the other thing. To Jim Harbaugh, that's all in and of the same. I need a guy that can block. Look at the tight ends that played for him in San Francisco. Find me the one that couldn't play dead in Western as a blocker. I'll wait. There wasn't one. There wasn't one. And people can attribute that to Trent Baalke, except, oh, wait, Trent Baalke went and spent big money and free agent dollars to Evan Ingram, mm -hmm. who couldn't block me, you, or the cleaning lady that cleans iHeart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tells me it was Harbaugh that feels that way. There's a reason that right now, if you wanted to bet Brock Bowers on DraftKings Sportsbook, you could get it at plus four figures. There's a reason for that because it's not going to happen under any circumstances. There's a reason that we're that, that we have we had him there to begin with because yes, Harbaugh did like using two tight end sets. Then we got smart to this and went, name me the one that reminds you in any way of Brock Bowers. Mm -hmm. There's not one. He doesn't play tight ends out of line like that. He plays them in twelve personnel, old school West Coast football. And then you saw what he did in free agency, adding J.K. Dobbins, adding uh, uh, Gus Edwards. It ain't that hard to figure out. It's really not. Mark Andrews, not a great blocker. Mark Andrews plays in line mm -hmm. a lot. Brock Bowers doesn't. It's two completely different positions. Okay. It's like drafting a slot receiver and an outside receiver. If you have three slot receivers, you're in trouble. Brock's kind of the same way. I, I, I didn't actually, I had a point on top of that. The discrepancy in these two classes is how deep this class is. Because I'll say the same thing about Malik Neighbors that I just said about uh, take about taking him over Bowers that I just said about taking MHJ over him. That gets you fired, too. If Malik Neighbors is as good as advertised and he doesn't get in any form of trouble and you don't have outside receivers and you can't stretch anybody vertically, I don't give a damn how good Brock Bowers is. You're going to look like a moron. And that's where I'm at with with Harbaugh Vegas is in the same boat now here is where that could be a little different if they traded down mm -hmm. the Chargers are the team that Vegas is trying to tell you hey don't look now but it makes a lot of sense for them to move down a lot of sense for them to move down and if there was a a Falcons a Bears that wanted to come up or if there were rumblings behind closed doors that maybe the Jets weren't as in love with Brock Bowers as we thought and you could get him in the teens, mm -hmm. that's a little different. Jim Harbaugh is one of the pioneers of value-based drafting. He's not taking a tight end in the top five. Now, can he look past some of the warts of you not being able to block if he takes him in the teens? That's more realistic. 
Can he add an extra one and then get the tight end and then get a more valuable position, cornerback, somebody like that in the 20s, and walk away from that okay? Yes. But you have to look at the history of how he drafted. It just doesn't line up. Mm -hmm. It would be so out of character that I can't wrap my brain around how it would actually happen. But somebody could see the value in Brock Bowers and realize that they have to get up there. I just don't know where. I mean, I don't I don't envision the Giants trading the latest, down. The latest rumor is the Chicago Bears are now interested. Uh, the Bears they want to move interested. up from nine. Who wants you uh, interested in moving up? They've move, interested in moving time. up from nine. To They've get called Brock every Bowers. team in the teens trying to move down. That has smoke screen written all over it, trying maybe to so. drum up interest of a team trying to get up in front of the Jets. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, because I'll just go ahead and tell you, if that's true, Ryan Poles is dumber than I think he is. Because if you think you're going to play Cole Komet and Brock Bowers on the same field and not have a horrific time off the edge, you're braver than I am. Mm -hmm. Both great receiving tight ends. I mean, the last time you saw two great receiving tight ends with each other, neither one of them was a good blocker. Somebody was about to tell me, oh, Rob Gronkowski, Aaron Hernandez. Uh, Rob Gronkowski is one of the top five best blocking tight ends in the history of this league. Absolutely. Doesn't work when you got two that can't block. Because you can't set an edge. No. It does. And that makes of all the rumors that I've heard, Chicago with Brock Bowers makes literally zero sense. You could tell me they were going to take Kenny Powers at nine, and I think it would make more sense to me. <laughs> so maybe that's another smoke screen, but it's one team that your Jets got to worry about. That's picking in front of them, and if they, you know, if teams are as in love with Brock Bowers as we are. And have him as a top three pass catcher. If you have the capital, you make the move. Go get your guy. I will be stunned if a team moves up into the top ten for Brock Bowers. You're in the sportsocracy. And this is ESPN Asheville. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduce stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Now. Now your ideas don't have to wait. Now they have everything they need to come to life. Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas, loves expanding your business, evolving your passions. We push what technology can do so great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to Now. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern Hospitality Touch. 
much. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. Bonus bucks. Nope, not those. These. Win $1,000 in bonus bucks right here. Keep listening for the keywords to enter at our website. Brought to you by Discount Shoes. Step into savings at Discount Shoes in Brevard Road. Find your favorite brands for the whole family at unbeatable prices. From sporty sneakers to chic sandals, we've got it all. Hurry in and walk out with a deal that will have you stepping in style. Discount Shoes, 1255 Brevard Road, Asheville. The Sportsocracy. What are you people? On dope? We are back at the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. Sportsocracy heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We're seen everywhere on YouTube. Oh, no, Dickie Betts died. Oh, that sucks. You know who, you, you know Dickie Betts, don't you? No. You guitar player for the Allman Brothers? Come on, man. How would I know that? Great. It's a great guitar player. One of the best slide guitar players of all time. That's a bummer. R.I.P. Legend. We're top 20, for, or yeah, top 26 pass catchers in the uh, NFL draft. 2024, we're a week away from the festivities in Detroit, Michigan. Of course, the Sportsocracy will be bringing you live coverage from Radio Row at Marcius Park. Marcius Park. Marcius Park. They're in downtown Detroit next week our buddy steven westbrook said he's from detroit and they are known for uh corned beef yes. pizza and hot dogs yes coney dogs coney dogs but that's a new york thing i thought oh i'll eat a coney dog i'll eat a hot dog anywhere i love mm-hmm. hot dogs sure sure um marvin harrison jr malik neighbors brock bowers those are your top three in this class really going out on a limb there uh, at number four. Oh, yeah. I'm headed out on a limb here, too. Roma Dunes. Oh, <gasps> shocker. I mean, as soon as he ran a four four five at the combine, I really kind of feel like that took everything away. Mm-hmm. By the way, I just, I have to say this. I don't think I've ever said this on this show before. You know how we talked about the big knock on Roma Dunes? They might be that he couldn't separate at the next level. You do realize he was an all-state sprinter in high school, right? I'm sure he was. Why are we worried about him separating? He separated constantly at Washington. I'm just, I'm not sure where that narrative came from. I think Adunze is the best value of all the pass catchers. Because I'm getting more and more convinced that he's not going to go in the top 10. Mm-hmm. I think there's a great possibility that the Jets have the option at Adunze and Bowers. And that they end up taking Bowers. Yep. Over Adunze. I think so, only because it would be kind of a hat on a hat with Mike Williams. Okay. I know he's only on a one-year deal. Yeah. When you have a 417-year-old quarterback, everybody's on a one-year deal. <laughs> Roma Dunze, he is uh, he is one of the best playmakers in this draft class. Uh, to, to me, I see he reminds me a lot of C.D. Lamb. In a, I can in, see that. In a sense that he has some amazing ability to be able to pull balls down inbounds when he's yes. on the sidelines. He's got some of the best feet probably since C.D. Lamb. He's one of the best deep ball receivers I've ever seen. Now, you could argue that Pac-12 defense, eh, I get it. I get where you're coming from. I get why you say that. But, man, I like a Denzel a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At number five. Uh, and before we move on, Bob Brown asked, do I believe a Dunze could get drafted over neighbors? No, I don't. I think teams have a different enough grade between neighbors and a Dunze that even with the red flags, that's not enough. I don't think it's enough to to push him down. Okay. I, no. Now, this is where I go slightly different mm-hmm. than a lot of the industry. Number five? Keon Coleman. Ooh. That's quite the 
jump from some lists I've seen. Well, he's like of, he's not even like top ten in some lists. Uh, those people smoke drugs, and that's as nice as I can say it. If you go back and watch the tape, stop worrying about combines and who ran what at the in the forty. Go back and watch the film. Keon Coleman should be in everyone's top six. Because there's only two guys on this list that I could physically understand how you have them ahead of him. It makes no sense to me. And he is one of those guys that I think NFL evaluators feel the same way I do. I think the media got it in their head because it's not sexy because he didn't run a fast 40 time. And then it gets into the, well, he can't separate either. Well, he separated pretty well at Florida State. Uh, Kalen Carson, who's going to go in the first two days, got obliterated by him. Uh, every Clemson corner they threw at him got obliterated by him. Didn't necessarily put up the stats, but watch the 11 on the 11. He's open. He's open quite a bit. Now, the line didn't hold up all that well because Clemson did get after Jordan Travis, especially early. Keon Coleman is a stud. He is a stud. And somebody, either at the back end of the first, beginning of the second, is going to get an absolute steal in this kid. Probably the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, it makes the most sense. You know, the team won a Super Bowl. Let's just let's let the fourth best receiver go to them in spite of the fact we probably have seven go in the first round. Or Baltimore. Baltimore makes sense, too. Although they don't draft wide receivers very often. Although oh, no, they draft them quite often. They just don't worked, work out very well, that's often. That's true. And although Zay Flowers worked out. So maybe well, they'll start a trend here. It's also the only one left. Here, we'll take all the ones in front of you, and you take the last one, and you actually got the best one. Uh, it is the Sportsocracy. This is ESPN Asheville. Keon Coleman, a surprise at number five on Flo Stradamus' top pass catchers in the 2024 NFL Draft class. We will continue, plus we'll get weird when we come back. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Absolutely gorgeous afternoon. We've got sunshine and mild weather, but change on the way couple of rounds of showers, thunderstorms over the next few days. Sunny today, low 80s. Tonight will be in the mid-50s with a slight chance of showers late. Friday, a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm, maybe a strong storm or two, 78. Saturday, another round of showers, thunder showers possible in the afternoon, 73. Showers are likely Sunday highs only near 60. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Allstate. Some people just know there's a better way to do things, like bundling your home and auto insurance with Allstate. Why make things harder than they need to be? There's a better way to save time and money. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. But I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it. And at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC QC Kinetics, after I reviewed their protocols and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Sheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 828-333-9517. That's 828-333. 8-3-3-3-9-5-17. 8-2-8-3-3-3-9-5-17. Some days, my active psoriatic arthritis makes it hard to get in the game. Now, the ball is in my court. Thanks to treating my skin and joints with Sky Rizzi. Rizin Kizumab Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults. Sky Rizzi helps with less joint pain, stiffness, swelling, and fatigue. For those who also have plaque psoriasis, 90% clearer skin is possible with just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzi. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. With Sky Rizzi, there's nothing like clearer skin and better movement, and that means everything. Ask your doctor today about Sky Rizzi and visit SkyRizzi.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZI to learn more. 
If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. At Ingalls, whether we're celebrating Friday Night Rivals, televising college basketball games, bringing the Fan Fest to semi-pro soccer, or taking you out to the ball game at your minor league park, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. On the weird scale, there's Vegas, there's Florida, and there's Asheville. Let's get weird, Asheville. It is ESPN Asheville. It's the sportsocracy. It's time to get weird. Let's go to Indiana, where a woman, we'll call her the Good Samaritan, Sarah Harris, 34 years old, um... She's just trying to do the right thing. She felt that she had been wronged. It's a lot more fun to do the wrong thing. Sometimes. Yeah, well, sometimes, I, sometimes. Um, she felt that she had been wronged by someone selling products, and so she decided to report them to the authorities. You can probably see where oh, this, this is going. Be, this should be good. An Indiana woman is facing a narcotics charge after she called 911 to report purchasing an inferior batch of methamphetamine. <laughs> she called the cops to tell them, quote, that her meth was not what it was supposed to be. She explained to the police officer, so she called 911, and she called uh, twice, made open line calls to... 911, which I guess is where you don't say anything, and then they trace your number, and then what happens? Cops gonna show up at your door. It's happened here in the building. You gotta hit nine to get out on these telephones here. So if you're calling a long distance number and you hit nine too many times, and then you hit one to dial the area code, and then you go, oh crap, I screwed that up, and hang up. They're coming to the door. You will. So I don't use. I haven't used a landline phone in years, and don't plan on changing that anytime soon. Well, when it happens to us is when we have interviews, right? We got to call somebody for an interview, and if you screw that up, cops coming to the door. So she made two open line calls to nine one one, and then they came to the house to make sure that everybody was okay. She explained that she had smoked some meth. Actually, she had snorted some meth. And that the drug left her feeling as if she was going to have a heart attack. She said that uh, after she had snorted the line, that she felt, quote, something different when it touched her skin and nostrils. Said that just before they had called 911, that her and uh, a friend who was also at the home had just uh, smoked a bowl of normal meth. So they felt okay while the cop was there. Is this like getting nacho cheese Doritos and Cool Ranch Doritos? We, we got normal meth, which, you know, leads to me <laughs> rubbing my butt in the grass out in the yard and not sleeping for three days. Then we got this crap that, I mean, I still didn't sleep, but. Uh, this article written by The Smoking Gun, and I just love the way that they put this next paragraph. Apparently believing that the local sheriff operated a better illegal business bureau, uh, Harris requested that the drug be tested and then she also declared that she wanted to turn the person in who provided her with the meth. While that is all well and good, my dear lady, you have crimed as well. <laughs> Maybe you can share a cell at the Clark County <laughs> Jail. They have charged her with meth possession. She will be getting some kind of a break for turning them in, and I guess going state's evidence or something. She'll get some time knocked whoa, off whoa, whoa, her wait. sentence or something. Stop doing that. Stop giving – don't give people time off their sentence because they did something ridiculously stupid. Okay, this was not a good no. Samaritan thing. No, she's this was, still – I'm angry. I paid $42 for this meth, and it's not good meth, okay? I want you to go get my money back so I can go down – never mind. No good can come from where I was headed with that. Uh -huh. 
you know, and I know, and I know that you know. She she will be getting some time knocked off of her sentence uh, if con- if convicted of these charges. I don't think it'll be hard to reach a conviction, though. You do have her admitting to the cops that she was smoking meth. She showed them she was in possession of the meth. And who's shocked to know Miss Harris has quite the rap sheet, including convictions for theft, meth possession, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, resisting. You see how this is going. I usually buy my meth from Billy Bob. But Billy Bob's doing six months at county, and now I had to go somewhere else, and I didn't get the good meth. <laughs> Ugh. Stop. Just please watch the sportsocracy on the YouTubes. Go to the sportsocracy.com. Click the live video link so you can watch the clarity as uh Jeremy's eyeball goes every six weeks. Yeah. Six I, ways to Sunday. It goes every direction except the way it's supposed I to. It. I love it. I'm the only person you'll ever meet that can look northeast and southwest at the same time. <laughs> uh my story is about Nelly. 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 That's okay. a name. Bet you hadn't heard it in a while. Nope. He just did a free show free show at the university of florida i'm good so was the university of florida (laughs) i could literally count the heads in the audience so it's a tiktok video and it zooms in on the stage and he's singing hot in here Uh uh-huh it pans the crowd it literally looks like a an empty hockey arena there are eight people in like the mosh pit area and then there are the saddest looking 20 florida students Maybe in the history of time. Oh, no. I cannot figure out, how did you get to a Nelly concert? I'm trying to figure out how Nelly got into a concert at University of Florida. Well, I mean, because he was popular at a time. I'm sure he came reasonably cheap. And so the University of Florida went, here, we'll give you $84 to come sing those two songs that you did a long time ago. (laughs) It's getting... Well, I mean, and I know where Florida was coming from. They thought half our uh, undergrad can't read anyway, so we'll just hand them tickets to a free show. <laughs> they won't know that they're unhappy about what they're going to see. <laughs> till, he comes, till he comes out and they go, what is this? This is closer to music than what I'm used to. <laughs> but that led me down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Of, there's a, a do you ever get on Reddit? No. Uh, Reddit is a great place if you want to lose all faith in humanity because the thing the thing that people are afraid to say on facebook or twitter because you might tie it back to them they will say on reddit because it's completely anonymous but there is a thread that's been trending for the last couple days what are you starting to dislike more as you get older oh that's a good one and it, it nearly got me thinking about this because I had already seen the, the the thread and then I saw this post and I went, hmm. You know what the number one people, number one thing people our age are saying that they don't like as they get older? Rap music. Nope. Loud noises. That's, yeah. Loud noises and crowds, which really panders into, you want to go to a concert? How many concerts could you think of right now that you would really want to go to? Oh, a bunch. I'm a a concert guy. I love concerts. I'm at Luke Combs, Chris Stapleton, and I get to three and start going, I don't know. (laughs) I think I'm going to order a pizza and watch Chicago Fire. I'm I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's... (laughs) I've always been a concert guy. I was raised on concert. I was uh, I was raised in bars, basically, and I was too. It doesn't mean I'm a concert guy. You weren't. Yeah, yeah. There were other things going on at the bars that you were taken to. I'm not. Just, just saying. Swipe I was taken there for the music. Right, didn't it, it happened before <laughs> you had a cell phone? I promise. I once made a list of all of the concerts and bands that I have ever seen in my concert going career. And when I got to the end of the list and I was at 400 and yeah, 427 bands, I went, okay, well, I've seen a bunch. There aren't 427 bands that I would not only, (laughs) not only pay to see, 
There are not 427 bands that could do a free concert in the back parking lot of iHeart right now, which is where my car is parked. Right. I would walk home to avoid outside of maybe 100 bands. Now, to be fair, and anybody goes, oh, that's 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 a BS number. We went to a lot of music festivals, so they all count as a separate band. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm good on all of that. Uh, other things, other things that people said that they were getting more annoyed by as time went on. And, and as I started tabulating this list, I, I think every one of these irritates me. Uh, drinking was pretty high on the list. That's the one that I was omitted from mm-hmm. indigestion. Apparently the older you get, the more you have indigestion. I've had it since I was about 20. So it's not a new thing. People who gossip bad grammar and overconfidence yep there's also a a lot of the term willfully ignorant Mm -hmm. i don't know what that means exactly but maybe that means i am uh in in certain respects we're all willfully ignorant of you have a position that you believe no matter how many times somebody tells you that that's not the case like I am willfully ignorant or was willfully ignorant that Antonio Gibson was a good running back in the NFL. Correct. Right. And no matter how many times, how much evidence you put in front of me, I'm going to continue to say, like, Antonio Gibson is he's an okay running back in the NFL. Hey, you give him a year, you'll probably, he could be the third on this show. You know, and know. after he washes out in New England, I. Hey. Doors always open, Anthony, Antonio. Maybe he needs a new role. You want to <laughs> you, you, you find a new? We'll find a new role for you. You think my fights with Nate Brown were good? My <laughs> fights with Antonio, I at least respected Nate as a player. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brutal. Because <laughs> those two guys' careers c- compared to each other. Uh, yeah, Nate. Not that close. Nate, infinitely better player. Stop that. <laughs> Nate was an infinitely better player. <laughs> He's not listening. You could be. That's I. I'm not pandering to him. Okay. Antonio Gibson should have lasted about 15 minutes in the NFL. <laughs> hey, Antonio, hold on to this football. Oh shoot! Oh uh, shoot! I already dropped. I guarantee you, when they did that egg baby thing in school, he failed that hard. Yes. Yes. Um. All right. You're in the sportsocracy. This is ESPN Asheville. 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. The top pass catchers in the 2024 NFL draft. Flostradamus taking us through his top 26. Mm -hmm. We've only just begun. That's right. Uh, Only just begun. We will continue with the list up next here in the sportsocracy. Thursday, May 2nd, Orange Peel Events presents Portugal the Man at Rabbit Rabbit. I keep my hands on myself. Get your tickets now online at theorangepeel.net. Don't miss Portugal, the man, live May 2nd at Rabbit Rabbit. The key to any successful business is maximizing your reach. That's where the power of radio can help you get more customers in your doors and telling all of their friends about our friends. Hello, friends. Get your message to the masses through ESPN Asheville, the Sportsocracy, and iHeartMedia Asheville. Learn how all of our great partners like Ingalls Markets, DraftKings Sportsbook, and Monster Brewing, to name a few, use us to continue to build their businesses. Just email me, tankspencer at iHeartMedia.com. Elevate your outdoor living space this year using stone. Tanzite has developed stone decking crafted without any plastic composite materials to redefine durability. Visit Tanside.com to see how stone decking doesn't scratch, stays cooler, isn't slippery, and has all the durability you would expect from stone, which is why it's guaranteed for life. At Tanside.com, you will see how we develop stone to easily transform any ordinary wood deck. You can even make your 
your deck waterproof for a dry space below. Versatile and adaptable, Tanzite is perfect for decks, stairs, over concrete, or ground applications. Visit Tanzite.com to start planning your project with a free 3D design and construction plan tailored to your space. Order a sample today to witness the incredible beauty and durability firsthand at Tanzite.com. That's T-A-N-Z-I-T-E.com. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White Haze, Heat Perfect, Scary Berries, and my personal favorite, Mean Green. And number three at 6% ABV, Max Protect. Always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. The Sportsocracy. Why are you smiling? Because I love football. This is the Sportsocracy, and we are back in the Angles studio on ESPN Asheville. Top 13 pass catchers for the upcoming 2024 NFL Draft. We're through just the top five here. So this will carry on into the next hour. No doubt. Uh, at uh, number six, after Keon Coleman. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Brian Thomas Jr. Now, I, I will say this. I'm I'm not willfully ignorant, ignorant enough to not say that I might be too low on him. Mm -hmm. The raw, in terms of just a deep threat with Brian Thomas, is really tantalizing. Because you look at a guy that's 6'3", ran a 4'3'9", but there's just something about him mm -hmm. that I don't ever see a true one. He's a deep threat. End Nothing of more. message, repeat the line. Nothing more. He's not a particularly good route runner. Um, I don't think he's... I don't know that he's ever going to be the go-get-me-12-yards guy. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to take that in the first round. That's I think that's why I'm so low on Xavier Worthy. Do I know that he can run by people? Yes, I, I'm well aware of that. I really would like you to be able to do something else. And he just doesn't, Thomas doesn't do it consistently. Now, he only played one real year of, of college football. I mean, he was a piece of the offense for three years. But he was only a dude for a year so there's a possibility he could develop it is a gimmicky offense at lsu because i have some of the same questions about neighbors he's not a great route runner either he's just unbelievable with the ball in his hand and i've learned about doubting lsu receivers i don't really care who the coach is that matter they recruit guys at a super high level yes and i do like the raw i just I would be remiss if I didn't point out, like Jacksonville at, at 17 scares the sin out of me. Because you're telling me you have him and Gabriel Davis on the outside with Christian Kirk, who loves to get hurt. Uh, that doesn't make me feel good. All right, Brian Thomas at number six. We'll do one more before the top of the hour here. Well, we might as well do two more because two more? they're tied with each other. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Troy Franklin and A.D. Mitchell. I really like both. They also both have body types and play styles that are notorious 
for players that bust in the NFL. Because you're big, but you're not big, big. Mm -hmm. They're both 6'2". They both ran fast. But neither one has, like, great hands. A.D. Mitchell does at the point of the catch. I'll, I'll get to him in a second. I'll break these two up into, into two different players. Troy Franklin, in terms of building a wide receiver, he looks like a stereotypical wide receiver. He's got the build. He's got the look. But... He's light. And I'm not sure that he wasn't so dynamic in college that nobody ever pressed him. I'm not sure that he doesn't get pressed on every single snap. Every single snap when he gets to the NFL. Mm -hmm. Which is why I want I don't want him to be one of those guys that goes to the top of the second round. Like Troy Franklin of the Kansas City Chiefs, in. Sign me up right now. Buffalo Bills, in. Not because I think they have a ton of receivers, but because I think they're going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at the receiver room. What would scare me is if he goes to a team like New England and there's just nobody to take the pressure off of you early. I still think he needs to develop, even though he was a consistent producer in college. A.D. Mitchell, I have a slightly different problem with. Okay. So he ran a 4-3-4 four, four mm -hmm. at, the, at the combine. Did you ever watch him and think he was that fast? Was there any point where you went, you're one of the fastest receivers in college football? Mm, I mean, right he played outside, for your team. Right outside the I'm elite. not saying I thought he was slow. I didn't think I'm he saying 4-3-4 four, four is good googly you're fast. I did not think he was Xavier Worthy fast, but, yeah, I mean, he was a pretty speedy guy. He's quick. I always thought he was quick. I never thought he was that. Mm-hmm. I always thought he had really, ex he was explosive. I always thought he was a guy that really good with the ball in his hand, but I never looked at him as that's an elite deep threat. What scares me about that is the exact opposite of what I have with Keon Coleman. I don't think Keon Coleman's straight line fast. A.D. Mitchell, I now know, is straight line fast. Mm -hmm. Here's my question. Why do you not play that fast? Because I never at any point thought he did. I always thought he was taller than he is. And I don't think he's that fast. Mm -hmm. Now, the taller, I like that. That means you're physical, really get after it at the point of the catch, and you're not going to let people bully you. I like all of that. As far as his time at Georgia, because I wasn't invested as much in Texas games this past year, but in his time at Georgia, I very rarely remember the blazing speed. I very rarely remember seeing him just beating a guy, you know, 15 yards down the field on a route. I always thought he was best at the contested catches. And I don't know that there's another wide receiver in this class that, that has a uh, clutch gene bigger than A.D. Mitchell. And, and I would agree with that. When the games got bigger... He was the one that you could rely on. And I would agree with that. But there's a there, there's a, another side of that coin. When the game wasn't bigger, there were a lot of times that you would just go, where the hell did he go? Yes. Like, like did he go find a, a snow cone and sit on the bench? Because he disappeared for about two quarters. Mm -hmm. And you go back and watch those all 11s, and you're getting 50% effort. And that's what bothers me is – are you only big in the big moments? Are you a guy that takes plays off? Is there is the motor a concern? Because you add all those things together and it gets really concerning as to, why did I never feel like you were that guy? And it could be that Xavier Worthy was on the other side and he's the deep threat. That's not really what I asked you to do. Okay, I, I get that. I never at any point thought you had that in you. So it, it worries me. The raw, all the way in. That's why he's up here with Troy Franklin. That's why he's up here with Brian Thomas. Because those are the three guys who have the raw talent to be ones. I just have not seen it yet. All right, we'll continue with uh, Flostradamus' top 26 pass catchers for the 2024 NFL Draft after the top of the hour. The list is getting ready to get a little short and a little slutty. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Absolutely gorgeous afternoon. We've got sunshine and mild weather, but change on the way. 
couple of rounds of showers, thunderstorms over the next few days. Sunday today, low 80s. Tonight will be in the mid-50s with a slight chance of showers late. Friday, a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm, maybe a strong storm or two, 78. Saturday, another round of showers, thunder showers possible in the afternoon, 73. Showers are likely Sunday, highs only near 60. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Indeed.com. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Their all-in-one platform helps you attract, interview, and hire candidates all from one place. And Indeed's interview tool lets you schedule and conduct virtual interviews right from their website. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. This election year, there are so many issues that divide us. Which candidate will wind up with the task of trying to unite us? Join us as the future unfolds on News Radio 570 WWNC. Western North Carolina's election station. I'm still going for it, even with higher strength stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or anti phospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. From the Ingalls Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. Now, your chance to win $1,000. Just enter this nationwide keyword on our website, FUN. That's FUN. Enter it now. Log on now to ESPNAVL.com. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingle Studio. It is ESPN Asheville. This is the Sportsocracy. You're listening locally on 92.9 FM, 880 AM, or 1400. Heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Take us with you everywhere you go. You can also watch us everywhere you go on YouTube. Just go to thesportsocracy.com, click the live video link, subscribe to the channel. That way you can join us in the chat. Final hour here for a Thursday afternoon as we're counting down the days to the big one next week next thursday night at eight o'clock we'll have the uh live coverage of the nfl draft on the youtube channel from radio row i've 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 been waiting to do this for several days seven hours of commercial free draft miss and from marcia's park in downtown detroit we'll have the live coverage for you coming up next week what wednesday thursday and friday live from the radio row that is correct. All right. Just had to guess. You forgot to tell me what when we're flying out. Tuesday night. Okay, there you go. And then go. we're flying back very, very, very early Saturday morning. Well, got to. So if you decide to join me for day three at the Village Porch, 51 North Merriman Avenue, we'll be starting at noon. We have some new friends. We talked about that during the listener draft yesterday. I will be by myself in person. But if you watch on the YouTube stream, you will see some new friends that will be Friends of yours. As time goes on, I will. Uh, I, I may make an appearance later in the day, but uh, that day is uh, the nuptials of uh, First News on Five Seventy Morning host Mark Starling. We'll be getting married on Saturday morning, so which means got to be there. Which means if Tank does make an appearance, he'll show up and go. You got any Fritos, man? I like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Can you make me some nachos, but do it with, like, Doritos? Yes. Yes. And then throw cheese on so the bottom good. and on the top. Oh, so good. That'd be so good. A little refried beans, some jalapenos, sour cream. It's all, oh. You got to put the guacamole on top, too. Oh. Yeah. That's some not Black food. olives. 
Why do you like things that are not food? Neither one of those things should be eaten. You don't like olives either? No. Good night. What is wrong? Oh. All right, it is third olives hour. Are gross. <laughs> third hour of the program here. Continuing the top 26 pass catchers list because, I mean, that's just how deep this class is. How many draftable wide receivers are there in this class, Jeremy? Uh, let's see. I've got them separated into slot guys and receivers, so I have to math. Um, 52. 52. So, a lot to fill the list here. That's why we decided to stretch this, uh, this particular position group out because it is a very, very deep draft. We are through the top eight. Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Brock Bowers, Roma Dunze, and Keon Coleman, or Flostradamus' top five at ESPN Draft Nerd, has Brian Thomas Jr. at six, Troy Franklin, A.D. Mitchell at eight, at number nine, Lad McConkey. Mm-hmm. He is the definition of very unabashedly slotty. Yes. The I mean, he's, he's like Julian Edelman reincarnated. Yes. The, the slottiest of all the receivers in this draft. He is. I mean, just a dollar, anything you want. He, That's what we're talking he's about. Ju- he's just so unstoppable. And it's not because he's blindingly fast. He's just one of those guys that finds. He did run faster than I expected him to. How fast did he run? Four three nine. Oh, okay. That's six See, flat a buck eighty five. So. There's there's another one. I'll put that up there with A D Mitchell. <laughs> I always thought he was more shifty than he was straight line fast. Lad. Yes. Yeah. He was open a lot at he, the senior ball. He's just a guy that has a knack to get open to find the soft spot in the defense. He is the guy that you can rely on. One of one of my favorite pairings is to make him the first pick of the Carolina Panthers. I, and I don't understand that. Why? Because you already have Adam Thielen that plays in the slot. For six months. No, I got that. And Lad will be the next one. Who else would I want him to learn from? Learn how to be the best slot receiver in the game. Adam Thielen can teach you how to do that. Yeah, I, I think you have a much higher faith in, in Lad. I do. <laughs> I do because I feel like he is going to be a solid player in this league for a long time. Well, here's my problem with Lad McConkey. He was open a lot in college. A lot. He had Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint, uh A.D. Mitchell, Mitchell, Jermaine Burton. Just a slew of guys on the outside. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say this as nicely as I can. He damn well better get to be the best slot receiver in the game because if you put anybody in the same zip code as him, he is worthless. How many legit contested catches did he have in his entire career at Georgia? Ooh. Legit contested catches. I don't know, I'm guessing it's a very low number. Seven. Four. It was four. <laughs> four. This is not what he does. Mm-hmm. He is the little shifty guy mm-hmm. that one-on-one gets open. Here's my problem. When you come to the NFL, do you know how many good slot corners that, that I have in this league that I can just come up and press you, and now you're a little shifty? You better be as good a route runner as there is on the planet because there's nothing else you do. I am not as in love with him as you are. Mm-hmm. I think the thought that he could be a first-round pick is quite possibly the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. I, I do not see how a team would look. Even guys that I've got rated behind him, I don't see how I'm taking you ahead of that. Now, if I'm, and I'm trying to think of the perfect example here. If I am a team that really needs that consistent slot guy, I've got two good outside receivers, but I had kind of a rotation in the slot. I get it. I get it. I don't see who that team is is not that's in that range i mean because be really honest with yourself if you're just asking sheerly talented who's a better receiver uh, lad mcconkey or the player i have at 10 ricky pearsall in terms of just football player you watch them on television go that dude is more physically gifted he's a better player it's ricky Ricky pearsall and it's not really all that close yeah because he fits the narrative. He fits all of the things that he checks all of the boxes that you want to check off for a wide receiver. 
Okay, so when you say he checks off all of the boxes, yeah. what 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 uh, what are those boxes that you're referring to? I'm talking about speed, athleticism, uh, those kinds of things. That's funny. I wanted you to say all those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you realize that he's the same height, weight, and slower than Lad McConkey, right? Ricky Pearsall is six one, a buck eighty nine. He's I got mean, McConkey t- by combine by, by combine weigh ins. He has him by just over half an inch. He's got him by three pounds, and he's two hundredths of a second slower. Mm-hmm. He's an exponentially better wide receiver. He's not open all the time like like Lad is. He doesn't fit into that little slot receiver box. But to me, if you tell me one of them was a just dog in this league, I would say it's Pearsall. The reason I have McConkey ahead of him is if you told me one of them was completely out of the league three years from now, it would also be Ricky Pearsall. Mm-hmm. Because I don't see any way Lad busts out. I just don't know how you're ever better than the third receiver on a team. He's not. And that's my problem. That's best, not a first-round pick. He's the best three that you could have. And that's my problem. That's not a first-round pick. That's a third-round pick. Mm-hmm. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown, that was the knock on him, is that he could only play out of the slot. He's one of the top five best receivers in the league. Yep. And you're telling me Lad McConkey's going to go higher than that? Get out of here. <laughs> Doesn't make a lot of sense when you put it that it, way. It, see? When you do this for too long, you have way too many comps like that that you just go, this league makes my brain hurt because it's still the same people making decisions and then you change your mind every about 14 seconds. But, but there are there are just some dudes that you watch and you go... I don't know what it is. I don't know that I can put my finger on it. Like, cause I, I never would have expected Lad to run a, would you say, 4-3-9. Four, three, nine. Nine. No way would he ever run that. I would have thought, best case scenario, he's in like the 4-4-5 four, the, the four, four, range. I was somewhere four, five. I had him actually penciled in at 4-5. But there are just some dudes that you watch when the ball is in motion and everybody's running. Somehow, some way, that weird little shifty non-assuming guy always ended up being open it's like i remember how we felt about hunter renfro it's kind of the same thing he's just a guy that finds a hole and Mm -hmm. if you throw it down there he's gonna come up with it one Mm -hmm. way or the other i mean you can go down the list of all these guys that we've had in this league over the years julian edelman wes welker all of them i Lad is one of those guys that just fits the None hole. of those guys were worth first-round pick either. Just throwing it out there. Because yeah. you know what all those guys have in common? They get hurt a lot, and they don't last for very long. I'm just throwing it out there. Yep. Uh, Ricky Pearsall, who I have at 10, yep. is I, – I like virtually everything about him. He ran faster than he plays. He's got great hands. And in terms of route running – you you ever play that my player mode on Madden as a wide receiver? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where you could be the player himself yes. and you had to run the route and they'd mm-hmm. put the route on the field. And sometimes you would just go, ah, there's nobody Screw over it. here. I'm going straight. I, there's nobody there. Nope. Hey, Call for the ball. Out. That's Touchdown. Ricky Pearsall. He's the living embodiment of that. Yes. And he confused quarterbacks so often of where are you going? But, man, if you ever get him on the same page with a quarterback, that could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is throw it up. I'm fast enough to get away. Him in Kansas City, the thought of that is absolutely terrifying and kind of intoxicating because watching that would be an absolute thing of beauty. It wouldn't always go perfectly. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'm not really sure that – I'm not even sure he knows where he's going. It's just, ah, there's nobody there. Find me. Throw it to me. I'll outrun him. I'll get to the spot. And by God, if it's a contested catch, I'll make it. Yep. Number 11. Oh, do, do, do. Jalen Polk, wide receiver out of Washington. He's a guy we've we've talked about a good bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, He's in a weird position to me because he got so overshadowed at Washington, even by Jalen McMillan when he was on the field, but definitely by Roma Dunze. And you look at the clock speed. He's not that fast. With a four five two, he's not that big. He doesn't really do anything that just blows your mind athletically. But damn, he's open a lot, and and I don't really know why that is. Because like I said, he's not crazy fast. 
He's not a great route runner. He's a good one. Mm -hmm. Technically. But is that because he played in the Pac-12 and their best wide receiver, their best corners were always on Rome? That's possible. Right. I mean, I have the lesser player on on him him every game. If you just watch the tape on him in a vacuum, you would think that kid's a number two receiver in the NFL for a long time. Yes. But then you take it out of the vacuum and you go, well, he could be. Or he could just be getting the worst corner on the field at all times. Mm -hmm. Because there's times you don't even know who was supposed to be guarding. You you don't even know who the closest man defender is because the coverages are so blown. It's a lot of the struggle with you have all of these stacked teams. Sometimes you can really tell, right? Sometimes you can tell, okay, this, this team has four wide receivers and three of them are dogs like Ohio State. And then there's Washington, where maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know how good the twos are because the one is so great. The the one thing I will say about Jalen Polk that will keep him in the NFL for a long, long time, I don't think I've ever seen a player take a football away from him. Ever. I don't think I ever saw it one time. He is so good at the point of the catch. I feel like we can get one more in here before the commercial break. All right. After Jalen Polk. And you know, it's number 12. It's a guy. And Tank, I feel like you should know this name before I say it because this is one of my little boyfriends. And it has been for a long time. And he's he's a slotty man. And he played at a real little school. Malachi Corley. That is correct. You told me, I can't remember now who it was the other day, that you said would have been pounding the table for Spencer Rattler, which to me is yes. comically stupid. Yes. I would be pounding the table for Malachi Corley. Charlie Davis. Charles Davis? Yeah, Charles Davis at the NFL Network said he would he put out a list of the guys that he would pound the table for. I think Malachi Corley was on his list as well. This a guy that I would pound the table for. Mm-hmm. He's little. He's a slot guy. He is stupidly quick, and he is always open. Uh, I know the Eagles guys really, or the Eagles fans of this show really like Corley, and I understand why. Mm-hmm. I think he is this year's Tank Dale. I think he's the guy that nobody talks about because he played at a little bit smaller of a school, and then he comes to the league, and you just go, oh, that dude is a tank, no pun intended. He's just a tough little kid. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a possibility that coming into the NFL, having to play in a more structured offense outside of that pick and pop? Look, Western Kentucky has led college football in passing yards for several years now. There's reason for that. There's reason that he put up the stats that he did, and it was just video game numbers. I don't know that he's, I don't know that he wasn't propped up a little bit by that. And I also never really got to see him play against the competition, at least not as much as I would like to. The competition that I could really gauge you against. But I don't care. I don't care. I would take him in the middle of the second round, and I wouldn't think a second thing about it. Malachi Corley. I feel like I should drop Lad McConkey. I'm not going to, but it seems like every player I say, I'm like, I would take him over Lad McConkey. I would take Malachi Corley over Lad McConkey. Wouldn't think about it. Well, out of Western Kentucky, Malachi Corley coming in at number 12 on the top 26 pass catchers of the 2024 NFL draft. Uh, just since Nick asked, you know, Nick's in our YouTube comments, and he asked about a specific player, I feel like I should make you wait through the commercial break because uh, Xavier Leggett is next on my list. Okay. Uh, kid out of South Carolina. There are a lot of very just wildly different grades on him. I don't think there's a player who has as big of a range. I mean, because some people think he's going to the back end of the first round. Mm -hmm. I vehemently disagree. Not because I don't like the kid. I I do. I just don't see any way that he's going to fall in there because I know people that have a fourth round grade on him, which to me is nanners. Because he does everything well. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing that I look at and go, it's a huge red flag other than his hands. He does have hands that, well, sometimes his eyes, his brain, and his hands do not always communicate to each other. But I'm not overly worried about that. They're not concentration drops. It's more of a skill set thing. And I think I can teach that out of you. Mm -hmm. 
if you told me there was a guy in the second round that turned into an absolute just stud, I mean, like Debo Samuel, $25 million a year type receiver, I could easily see it being Xavier Leggett. I agree. He is the one guy from South Carolina that I actually feared. I think if anybody in the in you know in the SEC, you feared Xavier Leggett because uh, you knew there wasn't a there wasn't a single player on the field that you could match up with him. Uh, Nick in our YouTube comment said AJ Brown comp. I would say poor man's AJ Brown. I could see that. I will tell you this, and I mean obviously if you're listening to the show, you can tell that. Well, I'm a I'm a I'm a countryman. I'm, I'm from the old South. Um, Xavier Leggett talks exactly like i do he has a very thick southern accent if i hear one more person tell me that he's not very bright and i know damn well that it comes from it, because he had some clips come out after the combine where he talks and a lot of people had never heard him speak before mm -hmm. if you don't think i know why you're saying that <laughs> you obviously don't know how long i have talked like this because if i had a dollar for every time i've traveled to other cities other states especially especially up north, and my voice comes out of my mouth and all of a sudden you have to talk to me slower, stop. I've, I've heard that knock on him several times. And I'm not telling you he's a rocket surgeon. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you I didn't ever hear that until he did that interview on the sideline at his pro day. And then all of a sudden I heard it like every day for a, three weeks. Is the Xavier Leggett a moron? Yes. Is it, he's too stupid to pick up an NFL offense. Weird. You did not think that until he had that accent. Mm -hmm. And yes, that does hit a nerve with me. And it probably will for the rest of my life because we talk the same way. Yeah. Uh, all right. There is your top 13. We'll do the second half of the list coming up after the break or begin the second half of the list. Coming up after the break here in the Sportsocracy in the run-up to the 2024 NFL Draft. And just a reminder, we will be live for the draft next week from Marcius Park in Detroit. Leaving on a jet plane to see all the draft of us. <laughs> Is that another one that we need to add to the Greatest Hits album? Oh, I, I feel like this year I really should record the, the draft, Miss Carol. I mean, I feel like at least... At least one. You should. We've been threatening to release many clips for years, but never even released one. So maybe now this I, year we could put one together. Now I have an actual recording studio at my house. So there's a great possibility that I could actually make that happen. If you're tired of things that don't pay off, then maybe you should just switch up, right? You should just get in on the DraftKings Sportsbook app because if you win, they always pay up and they pay out really quickly fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips with the DraftKings Sportsbook app and it's a good time to get in on the action because the preseason is over the real season in the NBA has begun the NBA playoff action all the way through the finals now you can get in on it with the DraftKings Sportsbook app an official betting partner of the NBA DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with all of the greatest features. Same game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, all of it. If you're new to the gambling thing, we know there are some of you who you've been listening to us long enough. You know how to do this. But even if you don't really know how this goes, just bet on a team to win. That's you pull up the sports app. You go to the game you want. Just hit that one that says money line. And that's as easy as that. And there's something else to sweeten the pot for you. New customers, bet $5, use our promo code and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code WPEK. That's code WPEK and get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just five. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem, call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposited and deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. If you're listening to me right now, I have one thing every business needs most. Attention. Think about it. We swipe and scroll past stuff all day. But when we're driving, cooking, and working out, we're also listening. That's the magic of audio at iHeart. 
We're in your next customer's ears while they're living life and listening, just like you are right now. So get your customers to listen up today using radio, digital, and podcasts. Visit iHeartAdvertising.com. That's iHeartAdvertising.com. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades, regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Phone 828-333-9517 in Asheville and in Greenville. I'm Hannah Storm, and my new podcast, NBA DNA with Hannah Storm, digs deep into the history of professional basketball alongside my own as one of sports television's first female broadcasters. Now let's get you up to speed on what else happened around the NBA today. I'll talk to the legends of the game Dr. J. and those behind the scenes with some fantastic stories both on and off the court. Listen to NBA DNA with Hannah Storm on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. The sportsocracy. You two are just dumber to bag of hammers. We're back in the sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. Live in the Ingalls studio. Top 26 pass catchers. We usually just do the top 13s, but this... This... um pass catcher class is so deep that we couldn't stop it. Xavier Leggett at 13. You've only scratched the surface of the actual talent that's in this class. Xavier Leggett is probably going to be taken in the top of the second round. I would say so. And I would say so. Just to go to show you 13 pass catchers inside the, 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 the top, you know, what's that? We'll call it 40 picks of the NFL draft. It's quite a few, pretty deep class. So only one tight end on the board here. Probably won't see one for a little while. It's going to be a second. (laughs) Brock Bowers came in at number three. Other than that, it's all wide receivers at number 14, Jeremy. Tess Walker. Uh, He was open constantly. His biggest knock is can he actually catch? I, and I don't know that. I don't know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. He had some of the most god awful drops I think I have ever seen in the week of the Senior Bowl, the biggest week of your life, and you couldn't hold. He could not have caught a cold, soaked in water, and put in a freezer. It was 
hard to watch, mm. but he was still open all the time. He had a lot of hype coming into Carolina out of Kent State. Obviously, they went through the little period where he couldn't play as the NCAA would not give him clearance. Then, what, four weeks, five weeks into the season, he finally got the clearance. Joined in, you'd expect some rust on that, but by the time he rolled around to the Senior Bowl, you should be in a groove. I can't blame that on rust. So who knows what is up with Tez Walker's hands, but the guy is a physical freak. I I think he can be a really good outside receiver in this league. It might take a year. Uh, And I think he's going to be a good value for somebody at the back end of the second round, beginning of the third. Mm Mm-hmm. Frankly, my team picks at 71, and I keep looking at Tez going, do that. Take Brock at 10, take Tez at 71, and then we'll <laughs> we'll figure out that whole offensive line thing. <laughs> that seems like a bit of a gamble to me. It is a bit of a gamble, especially when every one of them is old and injury prone. But yes. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Have you signed Bakhtiari yet? Have you? Is that uh, a, no, but it's probably coming. Is that a done deal? Uh, he'll be, we'll rotate left tackles with Bakhtiari and Tyron Smith because neither one of them would play more than eight <laughs> games at a time. The, the logo for your offensive line should just be a wheelchair. Uh, at number 15. Oh, I went away from my list. Yep. I, you'd think I'd keep that up. Uh, Xavier Worthy. Uh, speaking of receivers that can't catch. Mm-hmm. It blows my mind how many people I've had jump in to try to defend him. And I don't understand why. I I don't really get what it is about Xavier Worthy that makes people... You you know that a line of pretty girls make smart guys dumb? Mm -hmm. Real fast receivers make smart guys dumb, too. Because I'd be really honest with you, I've never seen... I never at any point the whole time he was in Texas went, that guy's going to be a first-round pick. Never. Never once. Wow. I okay. went, that dude is stupid fast, and he can do nothing but run nine routes. Absolutely nothing. Manufactured touches? No, nah, not so much. Because he is one of the – I used to call these guys matchbox cars. Because, you know, with a matchbox car, you can pull it back on the wheels, and it will just jump out of the chutes, and it takes off, but then when it dies, it dies. Uh, did you ever see one of those turn and do it on purpose? No. Yeah, I never saw Xavier Worthy do that either. <laughs> he might have rounded off a route every once in a while, but pretty much it was, hey, you go be real fast. Yep. You want me to run a flag? Nope. Fast. Look, sometimes that's all that matters. In the and, NFL, at the, at, the col- at the collegiate level, that's all that matters sometimes is just can you beat your guy by a step or two and then catch that ball on the run? And go for six. You're not, he's going to be able to outrun guys at the next level, but not to that level. Uh, Not if they get a hoove on him. Because that's really my biggest drawback of Xavier Worthy is at 165 pounds. Mm -hmm. 165 pounds. I weighed that in the third grade. Throwing that out there. Yep. It is not going to take much to really knock him off path and i just don't see it i I don't i see a really fast track guy that just so happens to put on a helmet Mm -hmm. and even with that even with as fast as he is all i have to do is drop a safety he never beats safeties over the top ever you put zone coverage against him don't let the safety come over in a too high just drop the safety you have completely neutered him. There's nothing there. That's the difference between him and a guy like Hollywood Brown, who I said a lot of the same things about. The only thing was that Hollywood was, he could cut in, you know, take a, a, an inside line on a on a dig or something like that, and it kept the safety just honest enough. Xavier Worthy, I know what you're doing nine times out of ten, and I'm, I'm not afraid of you. If a team takes him in the first round, and I, I, I want this on camera right now, if a team takes him in the first round, I, on Radio Row, will laugh literally so loud that I may have to take my hat off and pee in it because I I will soil my new trousers. Please don't do that. I don't need to be known as the partner of the guy who pooped himself on Radio Row. I I I said I would pee in my hat, but, you know, soiled, I guess. Yeah. 
soiled. It's, that it's usually like, means something else to me, anyway. Um. Okay. Xavier Worthy, fastest man alive, coming in at number fifteen. He's fast, but there's nothing else there. You're in the sportsocracy. This is CSPN Asheville. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Absolutely gorgeous afternoon. We've got sunshine and mild weather, but change on the way. A couple of rounds of showers, thunderstorms over the next few days. Sunny today, low 80s. Tonight will be in the mid-50s with a slight chance of showers late. Friday, a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm, maybe a strong storm or two, 78. Saturday, another round of showers, thunder showers possible in the afternoon, 73. Showers are likely Sunday highs only near 60. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Silk. Feel plenty good. Shop wherever you find groceries. Feel plenty good by incorporating Silk into your morning routine. Silk's delicious plant-based beverages help bring a daily dose of goodness. They are rich in calcium and a good source of vitamins A and D to support the health of you and your family. Shop wherever you find groceries. Thursday, May 2nd, Orange Peel Events presents Portugal the Man at Rabbit Rabbit. I keep my hands on myself. Get your tickets now online at theorangepeel.net. Don't miss Portugal, the man, live May 2nd at Rabbit Rabbit. Look at all the complaints that our competitors have on their BBB ratings. GiveMeTheVin.com is a five-star rated company. We do what we say we're going to do. It's that easy. Sell us your car. GiveMeTheVin.com. So easy you can do it in your underwear. To tell you that Kino picks 20 winning numbers, we wrote a winning number of our own. Hit it, boys. You pick up to 10. Kino picks 20. It's easy to play for a whole lot of money. Winning numbers are everywhere with Kino from the North Carolina Education Lot. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds to win a prize range from 1 in 3.86 to 16.63. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. The key to any successful business is maximizing your reach. That's where the power of radio can help you get more customers in your doors and telling all of their friends about our friends. Hello, friends. Get your message to the masses through ESPN Asheville, the Sportsocracy, and iHeartMedia Asheville. Learn how all of our great partners like Ingalls Markets, DraftKings Sportsbook, and Monster Brewing, to name a few, use us to continue to build their businesses. Just email me, tankspencer at iHeartMedia.com. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White haze, peach perfect, scary berries, and my personal favorite, mean green. And number three at 6% ABV, max protect. Always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. We are back in the sportsocracy, and it's time for the most important message of the day, Jeremy Green. Don't do crimes. No, sir. Let's go to Maine for this one, where a Maine police officer, he's the one doing the crimes. Maine, not a common place that you hear people doing crimes. Though. No, it's not. And this is this I is mean, another you had, one of the. You, you had Becky and her uh, spoiled meth in the last. I where did, was that? I did that was Indiana. I believe. It's two weird places. I believe. I mean, because yeah. that had Florida written all over it. Yes. I just graduated from the University of Florida, and I got some bad meth. <laughs> Sorry. I want to report these <laughs> these criminals. I want to report these criminals that probably went to Florida State. Police in Maine are accusing an officer of lying in a missing persons case. Washburn Police Sergeant 
Chandler Cole resigned after he was charged with aggravated forgery, tampering with public records or information, falsifying physical evidence, and unsworn falsification, whatever that means. He was arrested late last month, and it all stems from a missing persons case where this local guy, Eric Foote, he is apparently like a, you know, a, a, a transient in the town that they are familiar with. That would be a hoobo. Uh, maybe. Or he, maybe he's a mental patient that they just know of because he wanders well, around. You said anyway. transient. That's... Yeah, I know, it's something. You know, he's he's an outdoorsy kind of guy. I, I don't do politics and I don't do PC anything. <laughs> so I hear transient and I immediately go, yeah, hobo. hobo. Yes, uh, he could be. All signs point to... Say it. Hubu. Hubu. Uh, <laughs> but his parents are involved in this. So I'm thinking they live in town. He's just outdoors, you know. And um, anyway, calls for concern for Mr. Foot. He's out wandering around again. Cops go to find him. The cop says he drops him off at the hospital. However, there are there there are no reports. From the hospital. The hospital has no record of this guy being taken to them, of, 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 of bringing him in and giving him treatment. He's now been missing for over a month, and no one knows what happened to him. However, they have confirmed that the police officer had contact with him, did pick him up, but nobody knows where he is. And nobody knows the cop will not say where he took the, took him, says he he took him to the hospital and had him admitted, but there's no record of that. I feel like this case is not over. Of course, we'll be following up if there is an update, but seems seems as like a very odd thing to have a police officer swear to God he dropped somebody off at the hospital. No sign of the guy since. It makes me think that there is a... There is some kind of Netflix special coming. Oh, God. I get locked into those two. I do too. What Jennifer did, I'm telling you, it's been sitting in my little my list for about three days. I'm I'm gonna have to sit down and just watch that. <laughs> I don't know what Jennifer did. Frankly, I don't even know who the hell Jennifer is, but she did something, and it was crimes, and I need to know. It's probably what keeps me up tonight. Yes. My story is from Newark. Woman was at a CVS. Or, excuse me, she was not at a CVS. Uh, she was just walking down the street, and car pulls up, and they have a story that they just won a million dollars in the New Jersey State Lottery. But there is a problem with their winnings. Any story in future times, you probably could stop right here. All right, if somebody wins the lottery, there will never be issues with their winnings. Ever. And you know what they really don't need you to do? What's that? Hand them $20,000 in cash to, to get things. Are you sure? Uh, We've got to grease the wheels. There's no prints. There's no inheritance. It's not frozen in customs or anything like that. It will never be so. This started on the afternoon of February 28th. A woman was approached by a group of people in a vehicle who told her they just won a million dollars needed their help why specifically did they need your help that would always be a question that i would have this is another reason that i am not the person that cults are looking for because i ask too many damn questions you step up and tell me you're the messiah who told you that can i talk to this person it, do you have their cell phone number because i would love to hear somebody else nobody ever thought other that, than you nobody ever thought that you were going to be the victim of a cult uh, no you will I definitely am. be the one to start a cult though what are you, a cop? <laughs> Suspects told her that due to a procedural pros problem, they needed to provide $20,000 in cash in order to collect a million dollars in winning. But they told her that if she would give them $20,000, they would repay her generosity with $500,000. Oh. This should have been red flag number two. That's a hell because of a return apparently, on the investment. you don't understand how taxes work. Because if you want a million dollars in the lottery, you actually want about $475,000. 
So yes, you're gonna they're gonna you give them twenty thousand, and they're gonna give you everything the state gave them <laughs> because taxes are crimes. I mean, a problem. Good for you. I said what I said. It's theft. Woman was apparently so eager she willingly got into the car, drove to the Wells Fargo Bank in Newark, and withdrew the cash. The suspects then dropped her off at a nearby CVS and left her there with the promise to return with her monies. And she waited, and she waited, and she waited, and then she waited all the way until two weeks ago to file a police report to say she had been robbed of $20,000. Mm-hmm. And I know this is going to be harsh. I, I do. I get it. I am not so sure that somebody this stupid needs to be left alone with $20,000. So, I mean, I get it. We should find these heathens that that have have absconded with her $20,000, but I'm not so sure we should get back to her. And if we do, we should do it in very small increments. Like $150 at a time. Yep. I hear no lies. I, do, I will never understand how people get duped by things like this. I, I, I'll I, never, I don't get it. I don't understand how someone this stupid has twenty thousand dollars to begin I, with I, i'm not gonna lie where to did you. you come up with in the, the money? list of in the list of questions that was my three <laughs> did where? you save all your monies <laughs> <laughs> did you possibly is there a possibility that you did a crime to get this twenty thousand yes. dollars yes 100 percent. you robbed what bank to come up with this twenty thousand dollars because there's no way that somebody that stupid is financially solvent there is only one way that somebody that I met in the same day is walking away from me with 20000 of my dollars, and it entails a bang-bang, a skirmish of some kind, and somebody's going to be bleeding. And this would be a great time for me to use one of my favorite lines. You come at the king, you best not miss, because you might get Judy chopped right your judum. Judy chopped. <laughs> All right, let's jump back into your top. 26 pass catchers for the 2024 NFL draft. Jeremy, we're up to number 16. Roman Wilson. Uh, I am not as wild about him as everybody else. I think he's a third round pick. Uh, the sideline scout and I were, we talked about him a lot at the senior bowl. And I just, I don't see it. I mean, he's fine. And, and I think he will be, I, I think there are so many receivers in this class that I get to the point of, okay, like, are you telling me we're going to have 30 legit, contributing wide receivers in this class and roman wilson is the one to me you just don't look the part mm. i get it he was great in, in mobile and and he had great times over the course of the year you also played in an offense that it was almost a surprise when you threw and i just don't think he's going to get open consistently in the nfl he's also one of those guys that i i'm trying to remember who was it you had this criticism about a couple of years ago i think it was it was one of the Ohio State receivers, I think it was Chris Olave, that your knock was that every time I saw you make a special play, there was nobody within 10 yards of you. Yes. And Roman Wilson's one of those for me. He is. It's that when I saw him make spectacular plays and went, damn, that was a good play. You go back and you look at it and you go, well, I mean, I could have made that play. I also, the, the facts don't care about your feelings. People talked about, well, he was one of the only people who caught a pass on Queen Mitchell a whole week in the senior belt. You're right. Would you like me to show you how he caught it? It was behind his head, falling down out of bounds when Quinion had basically just looked at him and went, get some. <laughs> I think he was already celebrating when he caught it. And he was just dumbfounded of, all right. I give that to you. Maybe I tapped on that rep just a little early. Right. You got a good one. Good for you. Roman Wilson, the wide receiver out of Michigan, coming in at number 16. Number 17. Jermaine Burton. Character, red flags. Good golly, Miss Molly. You will scare me a lot. Massive. Fourth round. Fourth round uh, pick is a, a He won't highest. last that long. I know he won't. That's, but that's what I'm saying. He wouldn't be on my board. Because I wouldn't spend a pick higher than that on him. Uh, and I, I'm paraphrasing here. I've had, I had somebody in the NFL it, sum up Jermaine Burton to me. Million dollar talent, ten cent brain. Mm-hmm. And that is, it's not my words. I just repeated them. Yep. Number eighteen, Johnny Wilson, wide receiver out of Florida State. Anybody that's that big and moves that fast, 
I'll give you a shot. I mean, he's six seven, and I there was a part of me that thought he would be kind of Darren Wallerish in the NFL and play that almost move tight end. After seeing him up close and personal, I'm not so sure that's the case. I'm just not sure how you're supposed to deal with him. Injuries are a problem, but if you go back and watch the first year tape at Florida State, he looked like first round pick, and I think a smart team is going to take him probably mid to late third development it's going to take about a year but if you get him right medically there's not many six seven dudes that move like that there's not many six seven dudes that have hands like that there's not many six seven dudes that can run routes like that number 19 uh Aeneas smith wide receiver out of texas a m he is so good with the ball in his hand, and I think he's going to be a super, super high level kicker turner at the next at the next level. Mm-hmm. The problem is he's so little. I mean, he's five eight, and I think we're being generous. <laughs> like he's Tank Spencer five nine. Yes, which is to say he's really five seven, and he's lying to himself. So he's just a little feller. He is itty bitty, but there is a role in this league for him. And I can tell you there are a couple guys that that think he's so good with the ball in his hand that he actually belongs in the top of the second round. That's a little rich for my blood. But he is a really productive receiver with the ball in his hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, is he is he the one that's uh, going to be used as kick returner? I believe In so, this yes. new scheme? I, I believe so, yes. Yeah. The new rules, making, uh, making kick returners a thing again, hopefully. Ania Smith could be a real good one. Number 20. My phone rang right in the middle of the show. Uh, Javon Baker out of UCF. There are some there are some people that are way higher on him than me. I think he's fine. I don't understand the he's a top 10 receiver in this class hype because to me, that is just absolute lunacy. Mm-hmm. And I see it constantly from people that I think are really smart. I've never seen it out of him. I think he's a valuable three. Developmental, even possible to start, I think he's a developmental four. I just don't see, I don't see a ready-made contributor right now. He's not overly fast. He ran a four. I was trying to get to his prospect profile on my computer. Didn't do it. I I think my computer is still sitting here trying to figure out how that lady had (laughs) $20,000. I think he ran a four five four, mm-hmm. and there's just nothing special about him. He's a jag. He's just a guy. All right, Javon Baker, the wide receiver out of UCF, coming in at number twenty. You want to take a break right here, yes. and we'll do a, a rapid fire of the last yes. six. Yep, we'll get the last six in here after the break. Uh, Stephen Tao. No, we have not done the Ravens' top five picks of the last forty years. We'll have to push those off till tomorrow, but we'll have another batch of those coming for you on tomorrow's program. But the fin- final or the finale, that was the word I was looking for, of the top 26 pass catchers of the 2024 NFL Draft coming up next here in the Ingles studio. Introducing Tanside Stone Tile Flooring, a game changer in the tile industry. Say goodbye to the trade-off between durability and easy installation with Tanzite's revolutionary indoor-outdoor stone tile. Visit Tanzite.com to see how our tile is installed without concrete or mortar. Instead, our innovative rubber gasket system connects the tiles together. Each tile coming pre-assembled, you simply grab one and place it. No expertise needed. At Tanside.com, you can see how our foam back tiles contour to cover any existing floor while insulating against sound and cold. Beautiful and versatile. Tanside tile adapts to indoor or outdoor use, from kitchens to patios on concrete basements or wooden decks, all with the durability of stone that's guaranteed for life. Witness this innovative product yourself and order a sample today at Tanside.com. That's T A N Z I 
ITE.com. I'm still going for it, even with higher stroke risk from atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. Over a three-year study, Eliquis Apixaban tablets reduced stroke risk better than warfarin, and over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. A first stroke occurred in 2.9% of warfarin patients versus 2.3% of Eliquis patients. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without asking your doctor. It may increase your stroke risk. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. Medications such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners may increase bleeding risk. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern hospitality touch. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. It is the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. Wrapping things up here for a Thursday afternoon. Tomorrow, a... Uh, Another football Friday here as we're continuing to count down the days to the 2024 NFL draft. It's the last day before it's the last day where we don't have any more days of that day <laughs> till it's draft miss. That was a really weird song. Have, we're glad you shared. I sing a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of emotion. I sing a lot of things. I do. I sing a lot of things. Top 26 pass catchers for the 2024 NFL draft. It's so deep that uh, we we took two top 13s and just put them together here. So at number 21. Jamari Thrash, wide receiver out of uh, Louisville. He is a guy that will kill you over the middle. I don't know if he'll ever be a really good deep ball guy. But I think he's going to have a role coming out of the probably coming out of the slot uh, in the NFL. He's just really he's got really good feet. He's just he doesn't do anything so well that you go that's what you're going to be able to hang your hat on uh, in the NFL. But he's a good player. Number twenty two, uh, Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint, who I loved a lot after the Senior Bowl coming out of Georgia. Guy, you told me I was too low on, mm -hmm. and you're right. Mm-hmm. He's very good. Very good wide receiver. Number 23. Uh, Jalen Coker out of Holy Cross. He's a guy that will go in the fourth round that a lot of people won't know who he is, but he impressed a lot in the uh, pre-draft process. Number 24. Brennan Rice. I swear to you if his name was Brendan Smith, we wouldn't even talk about him. But he's Jerry's son. We mm -hmm. saw him at USC, and he was thrown to by Caleb Williams, and here we are. Yep. Number 25. Jatavian Sanders. There's your second tight end. Among pass catchers, he's 25. Hey, guess where the next tight end is? 26 with Ben Sennett. <laughs> I have finally rolled over. And all of you people that are trying to convince me on Ben Sennett, I'm not saying I'm there. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired 
fighting this fight. It's almost like fighting the birds. Amazon knows what I'm thinking, and they know it somehow, and the only thing that's around me at all times is birds. Yeah. Oh, it's your Alexa. There's no Alexa in this studio, and it still can hear the things that I think. Uh, it's about that time, Jeremy. Um, but, hey, there's still money to be made out there. Hey, the big thing, the, the, the thing to take away from this whole day is that we're a week away from the NFL draft. It's betting time. We've got the NBA's playoffs are starting. That resumes back tomorrow. And in, from the play-in tournament through the finals, all of the other things that are going to happen in basketball, the NFL draft, the golf, all the different things that are happening around the sporting landscape, just because there's no football games doesn't mean you can't still be wagering. And you do it with DraftKings Sportsbook. And if you're new to it, you're not an experienced betman like me, Super easy to get started. You can bet on something as simple as who wins games. Go straight money line, and you don't have to worry about spreads or points or any of those other things. And to sweeten the deal, DraftKings, using our code WPEK, you bet $5, and they'll give you $200 instantly in bonus bets. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code WPEK. That's code WPEK to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just five. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. Shout out to our go, guy, Bo Walker. We didn't get a chance to, to celebrate this. Million views on YouTube. Yes. We hit it yesterday. It was a long, long time coming. We thank all of you from the bottom of our heart. We'll celebrate it a little more tomorrow. Indeed. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Absolutely gorgeous afternoon. We've got sunshine and mild weather, but change on the way. A couple of rounds of showers, thunderstorms over the next few days. Sunny today, low 80s. Tonight will be in the mid-50s with a slight chance of showers late. Friday, a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm, maybe a strong storm or two, 78. Saturday, another round of showers, thunder showers possible in the afternoon, 73. Showers are likely Sunday highs only near 60. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. From the Ingalls Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Wayne's. Throwing to the front of the net, Gaines are able to get to it. Sorokin with another save, loose up front, they score! Carolina, bats home the rebound, and it's Sebastian Ajo, tying it at one. Pellick gives it away, as Stepan, silent, Stasny, Sharp, and he scores! He scores! Paul Stasny ends it, Oh, nostalgia. That was the the goal that ended the Islanders, the Paul Stasny goal, which was really just flung at the net from the corner, goal line extended all the way out by the wall, and Ilya Sorokin kind of sleeping, and it goes in. Sometimes those are the goals that end hockey games and hockey series yes Heck, not very different from the goal that ended the washington capitals mm -hmm. in the 18 19 first year carolina made the playoffs game seven double overtime justin williams just threw it at the net now it didn't go in directly off williams but it went in off brock mcginn in front <laughs> all right sebastian ajo was there too but brock mcginn was the player that it caromed, I think it might have caromed off his stick, so we're going to give him credit for that. Uh, but really, one of those things where you just fling it at the net and see what happens. Hope it goes in. Um, man, I have a very, very good story about that night that I will tell nice. later today. A very good story about that night. Story time. Uh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> right. I'm Adam Gold. That's Victoria. I see. I, I'm not sure you do. I do. I Are love you Adam sure? Gold story. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Because I, I just if, need to get the popcorn. If, wow. We don't have popcorn. No, popcorn's delicious. See. <laughs> you my, know what's a my, my wife mocks me when I do this. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not kidding. She, like, oh, should I get some tea? <laughs> like, here comes a, here comes an Adam story. <laughs> I I'm see. Just, I said, I'm not sure. I see where this is I'm going. I'm a little gun shy from. at this point. <laughs> 
Like, if you don't want me to tell the story, I won't right. tell the story. It's fine. It's You're okay. We can move on. by those comments. I see. I'm <laughs> triggered. Yeah, I am definitely. I am definitely triggered. We'll talk about maybe we'll, if I'm uh, if I if it's a good idea. We'll tell the story <laughs> later on. Brady Shea is going to join us in about uh, 12 and a half minutes. Yes. Give or take five seconds. Uh, so Brady Shea will join us in a little bit. Uh, hurricanes were on the ice to practice. So let's get rolling. I should wish it put up a Twitter poll. Should Adam tell his story about Game 7 <laughs> against uh, Washington in 2019? All right. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, of course. It involves winning. We love good stories. Yeah, well, it does involve winning. Um, uh, of course, the story doesn't have anything to do with winning. But either way. Uh, all right, Saturday, 5 o'clock, Game 1. PNC Arena. Oh, look at the new graphics. No, it's fancy. Look at the new graphics if you're watching on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice. It says Stanley Cup Playoffs 2024. There's a picture of Lord Stanley's chalice over there. Mm -hmm. uh, nice logo with little Canes uh, thing underneath. That's very good. Uh, hopefully we have this going on for about a while. Two months. Yes. Let's have it up for two months. All right. So everybody should get hyped for it. Uh, this is the best roster the Hurricanes have had in these six years. And just for giggles, go back and look at the team that Carolina iced in the 2019 playoffs. Go, go back and look at that roster and you will go, really? That team went that far? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. If for no other reason then it should scare the living daylights out of you that it doesn't take much to lose. Mm -mm. We, this is what we have in American sports, and I'm not knocking American sports, right? If you are a fan, and we have a lot of people who, uh, you know, grew up overseas and now live here and have taken to American sports, but you are used to, here's our season, what happened? And we're done. They don't know from playoffs. The English Premier League does not know from playoffs. 38 matches. Who won? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. We go through an 82-game schedule in the National Hockey League, and Carolina's record Saturday at 5 o'clock is 0-0. Zero and zero. Yep. Same team that they were 21 points better, or 19 points better, I think, than the Islanders during the regular season. Clean slate. Same record. Zero and zero. What you did for 82 games does not matter. It's an indication. Mm-hmm. And according to the desert, the people who know such things, the Hurricanes are the betting favorites to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Now, maybe that has something to do with the fact that at the beginning of the year, the Hurricanes were the betting favorites to win the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it, it may very well. But over time, these things have ways of adjusting. The Hurricanes have come through the year where they were not always great. They made two really smart additions at the deadline. They are, knock on wood, <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Relatively healthy. Yes. Apart from Jesper Foss, who did not skate today at their first postseason practice. Uh, but the key pieces are all there. All right, let's get to it. Uh, the Jag line, Jarvis, Aho, Gensel, they're back together. Hot. They didn't play uh, the last game, but you knew they weren't getting broken up. Jack Drury has bumped up between Tavo Teravainen and Martin Natchez. We talked about it. I discussed it on the latest edition of the Canes Corner Podcast, available wherever you get your podcast. By all means, uh, subscribe, like, do what you need to uh, to make sure it shows up in your podcasting feed or just watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, just search Canes Corner Podcast. Um, Jack Drury has played really well. And even though he is not the dynamic performer offensively that Yevgeny Kuznetsov is, Rod Brindamore is counting on the fact that you've got Martin Natchez on one side, Tavo Teravainen on the other. Those are your offensive pieces right now. And Jack can help balance that line defensively. Jack's not going to do stupid things. It's not going to make you go, why did he do that? <laughs> yeah. he, he's just not going to do that. And Jack's got some offense to his game too. I would not be surprised. 
if Drury has a big offensive, for him, a big offensive postseason. I hope so. Playing with two guys, they're going to get favorable matchups, especially on home ice. It should be a good series for those three. Andre Svechnikov is going to stay with Jordan Martinuk and Jordan Stahl, the parents. Yeah, right. And I talked about this as well. Stay out of the box. <laughs> stay, well, yes, right? Stay out of the penalty parents. box. But here's the thing about Andre. Putting him with Jordan Stahl and Jordan Martinuk really simplifies his game. Like, just play like these two guys are, which is we're going to try to keep the puck in your end. He is great. One of his best strengths as a player are puck retrievals and winning battles in the corners for pucks. And he should get some offensive opportunity. So a great spot for Andre. He's going to get a lot of ice time. He's going to play a lot. He's going to get his power play time. So good spot for him. Mm -hmm. Yevgeny Kuznetsov is going to start centering Carolina's fourth line. But it's not necessarily a garden variety fourth line. Kuznetsov, Nason, and right now, yes, Perry Kodkaniemi, you played well in the last game of the regular season in Columbus, even though it was a Carolina loss. Uh, he played well. And because Jesper Fast is banged up, Kuznetsov, rather, uh, Kokaniemi looks like he's going to start 